Yo, what is going on, guys? What is going on? Good morning. Let me know if you can hear me, <clears throat> and let me know if the uh, the mic volume is good. Let's see. Can you guys hear me? What is going on, guys? Looks like the stream quality is good. Let me pop out this damn chat so that I don't miss any of the chats like I normally do. What is going on, guys? Let's say good morning to some of you. Uh, Armando, what's up, Z? Hey, what's up? Stefan or Steven Boykins. Greetings from Belgium. What's going on? Uh, he's part of the Discord. What's going on, Tom? Lewis, what's going on? Mike? Uh, Re Rebecca? Rebecca Lee, what's going on? Good morning. Stuart Reed. Uh, Mike is straight. Great. Loud and clear. It's echoing. No, it's not. Julio. What's up, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? All right, let's see if we can get uh, some more people on the chat. Actually, you know what? I forgot to post it in the um, in the Discord. One second. I'm live now. Click the link above. There we go. <clears throat> What's going on, guys? All right, so today I wanted to talk about, obviously, we're going to be talking about AMC, we're going to be talking about uh, GME, we're going to be talking about uh, crypto, we're going to be talking about stocks, whatever it is that, that you guys want to talk about. Leave your questions in the chat and I will definitely get to them. So yeah, I mean, if we look, if we take a look, we'll, we'll start with the markets, but if we take a look at the markets right now, you could see that they are what you would call flat the s p is oscillating between being up by you know decimal digits and, and being down by decimal digits so currently the s p is down by 0.1 percent like i said in my video from yesterday we would see some choppiness if you haven't seen that video go check it out but i did say oh you know what actually one second this is what i meant to show you <laughs> Yep. All right. Sorry. I noticed that, that uh, I didn't change the background there. But so if you see the uh, what I was saying that the S&P was oscillating, it's kind of flat. Yeah. I mean, it's technically red down 0.08 percent oscillating back and forth. Uh, NASDAQ a, a bit up and the Dow Jones. Where is the Dow Jones? The Dow Jones is just incrementally down. So starting off kind of a flat day. Obviously, the market's been open for, for half an hour. I usually like doing these live streams not right when the market opens because things are hysterical and um, I would say unrealistic during that time, hyperbolic. So yeah. All right, let's look at the... Uh, the chat and see what's what we got a lot more people joining on the stream all right what's up red macy emily love these live videos thank you thank you so much for joining uh good morning monica elijah s fix going good right now james hazy what's up james master hand what's up all right oh wow already with the super chats thank you for these live streams learn something every time oh i appreciate it you guys really don't have to do that but I really appreciate it. Ed L, what's for breakfast? Right here. This is what's for breakfast. I don't eat breakfast, man. I, I usually inter intermittent fast. So I don't eat until about 2 or 3. Uh, I would say bet between 1 and 3 p.m. is when I usually have my, my first meal. I try to get a workout in before, but it's usually just, uh, you know, just coffee. Morning tea. Love this shit. Why did they, uh, why did they mute you? Good morning from Costa Rica. What's up, Carlos? Okay, so let's get right into it. Let's take a look at some of these charts. We have AMC on the left. We have GameStop on the right. There's the one-minute chart, the four-hour chart, the one-day chart, and we'll see if we get some trades in. Actually, stupid me, um, I sold some AMC calls pretty early yesterday. I sold them for, for good profit, but nowhere near the profit that, that we could have seen. AMC currently pushing above $19 right now. We saw a gap up, a, it gapped up 17% uh, today for the day. Now, the high, that, that's not the high that we saw recently. The high was back in January, uh, January 26. It hit almost 21 bucks. So I think we can easily get there at least, right? I mean, if you listen to the folks on, on the Wall Street bets, 
form, you could see that a lot of them are calling for insane price targets. Let's see. Immediate targets are 25 and then 35. I mean, that honestly, that is uh, that is being pretty conservative. You know, you see price targets in, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. But here's what's interesting to me about AMC is that the one of the, the, the biggest investors, which was the Dolly and Wanda group, they used to own 30% of AMC. They just sold all of their shares. They cut their stake to less than 10% after the movie theater chain reported $4.6 billion in losses, right? Usually, when you see a dump of shares like that, especially on a stock that's heavily shorted, usually you would see the price go down because now there are more shares available. But those shares, Wall Street bets, basically climbed all over them and were like, you know, like that scene in, uh, what was that movie? Was it Captain Phillips? Was that what it's called? But where he was saying, you know, where the, the pirate basically was saying, this is my ship now. That's what that's, that's what happened is that the Wall Street Bets crowd jumped on those available AMC shares. And they're like, this is our company. <laughs> that's that's the, the, the one allegory that, that comes to mind. But, but yeah, man. Um, now, should you trade AMC? Well, yes. If you know how to, if you know how to day trade, of course. If you know how to day trade, you should come in here and, well, not should, but you could come in here and look at the one minute chart. The way that I do it, I have the one minute chart at the top. I have the five minute chart at the bottom and you're looking for support and resistance. I actually have a whole video on how to day trade using this method. And on the right, you have active trader, right? So in this case, you would look at AMC, you would go to the, the trade tab and you'd pull up AMC and you'd pick an option, right? You'd pick an option that if, if you're planning, you could play both sides. So let, let's look at the chart. In the middle here, we have VWAP, right? Which is the purple. If, if you are playing a bounce off of VWAP, right? So if AMC on the one minute chart is dropping and it is hitting the VWAP, or you can even target what looks like actually it, it's bouncing off the 200 minute moving average, which is the green line on my chart, right? If it's bouncing off of that, then obviously you're going to want to play calls. So you can come in here, pick the shortest dated calls because those are going to be the cheapest and the ones that are are going to be extremely jumpy, right? The ones th These ones expire May 28th, which is in two days. You're gonna wanna pick a call and usually you don't even have to go that, that high delta. I usually stick to something that's 0.4 delta or below. You can right click this, right? Obviously, there's different ways you can do this. I know I'm going to get people in the chat saying, oh, you know, click send to chart or whatever. But you can right click, copy it. You can go to your charts. I can paste it here. And I have the top and the bottom linked, right? You can see the top one is blue. The bottom one is, is, is blue. And here, the top and the bottom are linked. So these two are yellow. So these two charts are linked. And these two modules here are linked. And... Essentially, this right here is the five-minute chart for the option, not, not for AMC, for the option that, that I'm looking to trade. And so when AMC actually hits the 200-day moving average or VWAP, whichever support level you want to use, you can then come in here in Active Trader. You could buy as many, you know, we could just say 10. You could buy as many calls as, as you want. In this case, you could set this to 10, and you would hit either buy market, which I don't recommend, or you would click on instant buy here at a at a limit price. And over here you have active trader. Here, I'm I'm teaching you guys how to date. I'm teaching you guys how to day trade right now. And over here you have active trader, and you could set the bucket size to greater than 10. So mean this means that show me all orders that are greater than 10 calls, right? You could set it to 20 or 50. Basically, you're trying to gauge the supply and demand of this specific option that we got from copying from copying it here right and then on the flip side if you're playing the put meaning if you see amc at resistance and you want it to play the downside it, resistance is a lot harder to judge especially in the opening because you don't really have a lot of data to go off of right support you can easily see that the 200 day moving average 
not 200 day. This is 200 minute now because this at the top is a, is a one minute chart. But, excuse me, you can easily see that the 200 minute moving average is support. And so if it touches this green line again, we will be buying these, these calls. Resistance is, is a lot harder to judge in this type of scenario. But in that case, if you do feel like the stock is hitting resistance, you would go here to the put side, right? And you would right click, let's go to like a, I don't know, like a 0.3 delta put. And you would right click here, click on copy, go to your charts. And this is why in my view, think or swim is superior because you can't do this with anything else. You can't do this with Robinhood. You can do it with some of the newer ones like, uh, is it MetaTrader or whatever the hell it's called? Um, but think or swim is is the OG man. This is why I can't get off this platform, and I'm happy paying the the think or swim fees because it helps me make money. There are so many tools at your disposal. But anyway, you would right click on the put, paste it in here, and now you have the put. So in this case, you would be playing the downside, right? So say that you figure that AMC's resistance is around nineteen dollars. If it hits nineteen bucks, and you see a bunch of put orders come in, you can come in here and buy a set of puts, either ten. You can even bump this up to twenty. You can bump it up to whatever. But be careful with this active trader module because it actually um, does not give you an order confirmation. So in Thinkorswim, normally you see like an order confirmation box, and then you have to click OK. If I click this right now it would just buy it instantly, right? Without giving me a confirmation. That's the point of it is because you want it to be speedy without any lag, right? So anyway, that's that. Let's take a look at the uh, the quotes again and then I'll go back to, I probably missed a shitload of questions. So I'll go back to those. But yeah, like I said, still looks flat. S&P down 0.02%, Dow Jones down 0.01%. NASDAQ up 0.07. This is a flat day, which we haven't had in, in a while, right? People tend to think of the markets as just being up or down, but it can trade rather flat. Um, all right, so let me go to the, did I miss any super chats? Because I don't want to miss those, man. I, I appreciate when you guys do that. You certainly don't need to, but okay. I don't think I missed any. North Kakalaki in, in the house. What's up, Regine? Tom, what's going on from Montreal? All right, let's see if we can get your toss template now makes sense. Yes, I have a whole video on it. You think AMC can reach 100? Who can tell you that? I mean, look, it's surprising to me that, as I said, that the, uh, what, what was that news story that I was talking about? That the, the Wanda Group, when they made 20% more of their shares available on the market, right? We're talking about millions of shares. When they did that, the price actually went up. Usually that does not happen. So yeah, here you could see the same story. AMC climbs 15% as Reddit traders pounce on newly available shares dumped by its biggest holder, right? So normally when you have that many shares that are dumped on the market, and by the way, they they sold their shares for probably a nice profit. I Actually, I don't know when, when, the, uh, when the Wanda group got in, but you know, they hopefully they, they sold the shares for nice profit. All right, let's take a look at short interest. Okay. So if we take a look at short interest, you could see that the the short interest that was released yesterday, this is the most up to date short interest. This site is called Ortex. I think if you pay for it yearly, it's like 49 a month. If you pay for it monthly, it's 79 a month, I believe. But anyway, aside from getting a freaking Bloomberg terminal, <laughs> for me, I find that this site actually has the most up-to-date short interest information. You can look up short interest on a variety of sites, but they are usually not, not up-to-date, right? They're giving you old information. So Ortex or Ortex.com to me has the, the best or most accurate short interest information that is that is up to date. So you can see that the the short interest continues to climb on AMC. This is something that I wanted to talk about though, right? So you see that, for instance, on the, if we take a look at Twitter, you can see that obviously there there is a hashtag that's trending right now for AMC. It's actually AMC 500K, and 
obviously these people are kind of trolling, but this person says, this is why the floor is 500 K and above. And it's because there's a tweet talking about how uh, unscrupulous the, 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 the banks are and the finance industry, right? It says banks collected $12.4 billion in overdraft fees in 2020. That means banks took over $12 billion from people with no money during a global pandemic. That is fucked up. If that, if that is true, obviously that is fucked up, but the way that this is framed, the way that the AMC trade is framed, even if you look at, at, at Wall Street bets, you can find it. But the way that the 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 AMC trade is is framed is that it is somehow a big F you to hedge funds. Hear me out when I say this, okay? From someone that's worked in the finance industry, these people don't make the same mistake twice. Okay? They got burned. They got burned with the initial AMC GME saga that that went on you know back in that 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 really took off in in january but they're not going to get burned again right so to think that they are somehow you know the sort of these apish figures that are just going to keep shorting these companies without taking a long position you're crazy you're crazy these hedge funds are also taking the long position they probably did there's evidence to to suggest that they probably did back at the height of the GME AMC saga, right? In January and a little bit after. They're not just going to sit on their hands in short positions. Yes, Melvin Capital did lose a lot of money. Some of the other smaller hedge funds did lose a lot of money, but these hedge funds aren't stupid. It's not like they're going to be shorting GME and AMC again without actually trying to be delta neutral and having a long position as well. So a lot of this, this, uh, open interest that you see with the options. Let's just go to, to AMC open interest. A lot of this open interest, you see here that the open interest ch change for the May 28th um, options expiration plus 78,000 new contracts. You can see here the volume and the open interest, right? And the way that Market Chameleon is interpreting this is that these are long buildups. The way that they come up with that indicator is whether the short the uh, open interest is increasing as volatility is increasing if that's the case then they consider it a, an intention to to buy or an intention to long and that's why they call it a, a long buildup but my point is right in total you have 1.4 million calls opened yes a lot of that is us however don't for once think that hedge funds are also not participating in this don't for once think that as a matter of fact they're smart enough and their algorithms are smart enough to bump up the short interest and take an even larger percentage on the call side. So don't for once think that you are somehow screwing over the, the hedge funds by buying AMC. I'm not saying don't buy AMC, don't buy GME, especially if you know how to day trade, right? Especially if you know how to day trade. I'm not like, to me, there are no moral victories in the stock market, okay? Okay. There are no moral victories in, in, in the stock market. This is a ruthless game. As long as what you're doing is legal, in my view, right? There is no, there's no such thing as an immoral trade, okay? This is a free and open market. These are the mechanisms that they created for us. You just saw that, that tweet that, that I was talking about where it's, a, and again, if it is true, if we can corroborate that, but you just saw the tweet that I was talking about. If banks truly collected $12.4 billion in overdraft fees during a pandemic, I mean, there are no moral victories in or, or even immoral acts as long as they're legal in, in the markets, right? So all I'm saying is don't think that you are just screwing over the hedge funds by taking this trade. Again, trade it, have fun with it. If you, if you know how to day trade or if you want to practice day trading, do whatever you want at your own risk. But don't think for once that, that you are screwing over these hedge funds. I guarantee you, without a shadow of a doubt, just from being in this industry for almost two decades, that a lot of this is based on hedge fund activity. They're not stupid. They're not going to make the same mistake twice. So just know that. Anyway, looking at the open interest, this looks absolutely insane. Again, if you look at almost every single strike price, you see the, the increase in calls. Even if you go out to June 4th, you could see an insanely large number of calls. This is on, on AMC. We could take a look at GME in a second. 
Funny enough, one of my previous videos, uh, I, I, I think it might have been the last Top Stocks video, either Top Stocks of May. Anyway, I was talking about the, the reopening. Oh, all right. I'll get to the super chat in a second. I was talking about the reopening and I was saying that AMC, where where it was at, was actually a good buy, not, not even for, for the meme factor. I thought that it was a good buy just based on the charts. I think we got in... Or when it, when I said that, um, I want to say it was right around earnings. I, I saw that that it, that it was dropping around earnings, creating this double bottom. Now, stupidly, I did buy AMC calls. Uh, well, that wasn't the stupid move. The stupid move was selling them. I sold them yesterday when during this pump, right, thinking that we would see a a retracement. They were calls, not not shares. If they were shares, I might have held on to them because they don't have a time expiry. But I sold them yesterday. I think it was like twenty five percent profit. But you could see that trade in the Discord. And by the way, if you want access to our Discord, link is in the description. So join that here. I put it in degenerate trades, I believe. But we could take a look at, uh, I can't even remember which AMC calls I bought. We could take a look at this. Yeah, it was, uh, God, I don't even want to look at what the value is. But buying the $40 AMC calls, expiring June 18th for 0.44. And the reason that I did this was because of what I was talking about. The, this platform right here, the screenshot is from Tastyworks. But because of, of all of the open interest that I saw and the fact this was on Friday, right? Yeah. So the fact that on Friday, on the 21st, AMC was retesting close to the 21 moving average. And I saw that it was forming this right here. And I'll get to the, the super chats in a second. I promise I will not forget that. But this right here is called an Adam and Eve pattern, which is a very bullish pattern. And, you know, I was hoping that, that we would see a, a, a rise and we did, but I ended up selling it prematurely because we actually gapped up now a total of, of around 14%. But I don't want, I don't even want to check what those calls would be. The $40 calls, I bought them for 44 cents. What do you guys think they are? What? How much do you think they are? Obviously, you can look it up, but just right off the cuff, what do you think these are trading for right now? Let's see. Let's let's go and look. I'm afraid to look, man, because I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. All right, um, let's go to AMC. Let's look at the $40, what was it, June 18th? 40 oh god they're trying and i yolo this like i was it was like the last and you could see that there is 155,000 open interest almost 45,000 new calls came in for this strike price right so i mean we're talking about let's see let's pull up a calculator is my computer going slow yeah all right so we're talking about a gain of and you guys don't even want to know how many calls I bought, man. <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh, my God. We're talking about a 318% gain if I held on to those. Uh, see, even seasoned traders can make mistakes. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. All right? Don't feel bad. If you guys sell too early, just refer back to this video here where your boy, Uncle Z, could have made... 300% <laughs> on AMC, but was literally flexing at a 25% gain or, or whatever the hell I made. So if, if you ever feel bad about selling early, come back to this video. But, uh, but yeah, I thought, I thought we would see some, some resistance there. Anyway, let me get to your, to your, uh, super chats. All right. We got a super chat from MC Hazy. If I'm getting good, if I'm getting good entry si signals on the daily, but the lower time frames look like they want to come down. Would a good strategy be to wait till the lower turnaround? Huh? What? Hey, Z, if I'm getting good entry signals on the daily, but the lower time frames look like they want to come down. Um, when you say lower time frames, are you talking about shorter time frames, like the one minute, five minute? Dude, um, it's it's a it's a separate it's a separate landscape, right? Here. Lucky for you, I have this set up. So the top is one minute, the middle is four hour, the bottom is one day, okay? When you're looking at this right here, 
it's a completely different landscape. How are you trading? If you're trading, you're not really going to be looking at the daily chart to make day trades. You can make swing trades looking at the daily chart. You're not really going to make day trades, okay? But you you want to corroborate, the, the top is one minute, by the way, sorry. The bottom is the, is the one day. But you're not going to make day trades based off of that. You you can make swing trades based off of it, right? Like multi-day trades, but you're not going to make day trades based off of it. So it really depends on, on what you're doing. But yes, I mean, it is a good idea to corroborate certain signals that you see on certain time frames with others if you cannot get a good reading. But the one minute time frame is actually, um, you know, showing signs of forming a pattern. This right here is called a double top. So as a matter of fact, that 19 that I talked about a few minutes ago looked like was resistance. Now we are establishing a resistance zone based on everybody else that's also day trading this, right? So we could have, like I, like I mentioned before, we could have came in here and you don't even have to go, you don't even have to go that far out. You can go to the shortest expiring contract, right? Because it's the cheapest one and it still moves quite a bit. And you could uh, buy the a put that, that has, you know, like a 0.3 delta and you could plug it in your active trader. And once you see that 19 resistance, you could buy the put vice versa on the call side, as I said, the, the, the 200 minute moving average, right? But to answer your question, it really depends on, on what you're trading. But yes, I mean, if, if you're having trouble corroborating or if you're having trouble getting a signal, you want to look at, at different time frames, but you wouldn't look at a one minute time frame, for instance, if you're swing trading. You wouldn't look at a one day time frame if you're day trading, right? You can quickly glance at it to see what the price means in context and see that, you know, come, going back all the way to January 26th, there is actually resistance at around $20.50 on, on AMC. But, but yeah, anyway, uh, we haven't talked about uh, GME enough. So we'll talk about GME in a second. Let me just see if I missed any of your questions. Hopefully that, that answered your question. Uh, all right. Uncle Z, damn son. <laughs> Think you flexed at 15%. Ah, oh, fuck. Was it 15% Jolene? Shit. What was I thinking? 300%. Yes. 300%. Everyone liked the video. Boost up Z because he's legit. Appreciate you, God Gamer. Appreciate you. I bought for 37 would be great if it hits dude it's trading at or and sorry not dude but uh lady it's trading at a dollar and 40 cents or whatever I, I i showed you unless you're talking about a, a different uh a different call any profit is good yeah for sure man come on i've been in this game long enough like there's you're going to live to trade another day so don't worry about it okay uh uncle z get back in it's frozen is it? No, it's not frozen. GME is rocketing. Profit is profit. Z, when you join Discord, it is not showing info on where to pay. Uh, the link is in, in the description, man. You can't miss it. Here goes GME. F is printing. Easy money. Yes. F, F, which is Ford, is to me was the most undervalued auto company, right? Like a lot of us want to look at Tesla and Neo. Neo does have, have a lot of upside, but a lot of... Um, we should say hope or expectation is priced into those stocks. F is the one that looked undervalued based on what it was about to do with regards to changing its landscape and focusing on the, the EV sector, right? And it is coming out with some excellent, excellent EV rides, man, at, at a great price. So I, I do like Ford was happy to buy it below 11. I think, it, I think Ford, if I'm not mistaken, I think it jumped up like five percent today let's take a look let's take a look at ford and by the way this is the trading view app different than the trading view site same uh same subscription but i find i find that that i like the desktop app a lot more than i do the um what do you call it the browser yeah wow ford is uh up 6.6 percent .6 today we hold a lot of ford and I did have Ford calls as well that we bought off of the 100-day the MA. I was also saying that this is a great candidate for a leap. A leap is basically a long-term option. But uh, but love Ford, man. Yeah. 
it is it might find some resistance here i mean it's going to hopefully we can break out of this if it breaks out of this we will see obviously <laughs> we will see new price targets for ford but hopefully it doesn't create a double top here right like i do want to see ford eventually break out and start hitting these these new heights but someone was making fun of me in the top stocks video when i mentioned ford as part of a reopening plan she's like she was clowning me probably for being old but she was like my dad owns ford and he says that the price hasn't moved in 20 years. <laughs> so I guess that that puts me in the, in the same boat as this person's dad. Um, so thank you, whoever that viewer was. <laughs> whoever that viewer was. All right, let me get to some of your chat questions. Uh, someone said, hi, mom. What? Nice. You brought your mom to the chat? Amazing. All right, blood in the streets in the OTC. OTC, you're talking about like penny stocks? Yeah, I mean, I've said it for months, dude. This is not the time to trade OTC. As a matter of fact, the only penny stock that I currently have a large amount of is Sesson. Um, and I did a whole video about Sesson. Go back and watch my last penny stocks video. It's the last one that I talked about where I said, you know, the, our penny stock is waiting for FDA approval or something. Go back and watch that. But Sesson is the only penny stock that I currently hold a lot of, up 30% on it, coming up on, on resistance, but we're waiting on, on FDA approval on this one. So, all right, let me go back to the, what? Let me, <laughs> I was looking up uh, guitar chords earlier, so excuse this. <laughs> all right, Ford is going to crumble with Tesla tech coming. Come on, man. Don't be, don't be, don't be so emotional with your trades, okay? Like, this isn't, a, a, this isn't a uh, what is that game called? That that war game that you always see commercials for that that video game. Anyway, but this isn't, this isn't like a, a video game, dude. It's not like oh, you know, this this company is going to crumble because Tesla is the king. No, as a matter of fact, Tesla is seeing a lot of competition. Part of the reason that its price is stagnating, right? Um, if you're Ford and you can offer an excellent EV model for 30 G's and it doesn't have broken doors and shit like a lot of, of Tesla's do, I mean, you are entering a competitive landscape now and you do have a lot of good cars being made by, by these legacy car companies, right? They're not going to crumble. They're going to exist alongside whatever else is there, right? So don't get so emotional with with your with your trades, man. Look at things objectively. Don't don't just root for a CEO, or root for a company, or root for a ticker symbol. But you could do whatever you want. <sighs> Uncle Z, how to trade Nvidia today? Easy, easy. You don't. All right. If you're not in Nvidia already, good luck. I mean, Nvidia was a steal at the two. It was sitting at the 200-day moving average mining its own business nobody wanted it and it was trading below 500 bucks now it is back up above 630 dollars they're going to do a four for one stock split if it gets approved in july and uh yeah but the way to trade nvidia is what we did yesterday was we sold an iron condor on nvidia because we needed to be within a certain range in order to to make money right so we sold an iron condor because i figured that we would see it would hit resistance and i think they by the way they report after market today but i figured that we would see resistance here usually with these big mega cap tech stocks that are expected to beat earnings when you see a rally right when you see a rally before earnings usually they stagnate at earnings unless nvidia comes out and says that it's i don't know there's some that, that it solved the chip shortage overnight yes okay then then you'll see it boom but Otherwise, you will likely see it stagnate, kind of like it did back here during this earnings, kind of like it did uh, back during the earnings of, of August 2020, right? Like when you see a mega cap tech stock and it rallies ahead of earnings, then it usually stagnates around earnings time and, and maybe even drops. So I traded a, a neutral option strategy, but you do not buy NVIDIA at $630 when you could have bought it at 480 bucks just a few weeks ago. What is wrong with you? All right. I don't know if you meant that, but I'm just trying to be dramatic for the video. 
All right. Did I miss any super chats? I want to be mindful that Sesson is rocking. I always sell early. I mean, you have to live with the fact that you will never sell the top and you will never um, buy the bottom. All right. Another super chat. Oh, I did miss some super chats. Sorry, guys. Uh, give Z two shawarma sandwiches. Give Tom Nash two bottles of vodka. Whoever finishes first is telling the truth and beef squashed. Dude, I don't have beef with the guy. I like the dude. All right. I was just, if, if I was, I was just talking about, uh, a competing narrative in terms of the valuations on Palantir. That was it. But through all of this, right, it looks like we became online acquaintances, at least through posts and, and whatnot. Right. But no, I like the dude, man. He's, he's a great dude. Um, but I definitely will finish the shawarmas before he finishes two bottles of vodka. I'm a fucking fast eater, man. I can eat probably most people under the table. All right. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Boris, uh, no question. All right. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. You guys can really uh, put some questions in here and I will try to, to provide you uh, as much value as possible. But I appreciate everything. You guys really don't have to do that. Um, I sold plug at 70. Yeah, that's great. Master hand, you're right. Oh, yeah. I was talking about the tops and bottoms. When should one opt for setting trailing stop versus stop losses? That's too general a question, man. Um, it really depends on what you're trading. It depends on your investment horizon. It depends on how much you're up. It depends on uh, the, the volatility of the stock itself, right? I like trailing stops most of the time. I will take trailing stops over uh, regular stop losses, but you know, it really depends on, on what you're trading. AD, how do you feel about coin? Um, I did, it was in my, my video yesterday, go back and, and look at it. It was in my top five stocks to buy now, but, uh, but at this price point, I like coin. <clears throat> All right. VW, really good stock. Yes. I own VW as well. I think so as well. Any Canadian stocks advice? No, no, I don't. I'm, I don't trade Canadian stock. There's only, there's only so many markets that I can trade then. Um, I do own a Canadian stock or did own a Canadian stock, which is Nouveau Monde, right? which did a reverse split, but we bought this back when it was, I don't know, 50 cents. But it did a reverse split on March 31st. It did a one for 10 split, right? And, and uh, got uplisted, but this is probably the only Canadian stock I own. But I mean, you're better off, in my view, you're better off trading American stocks because that's where the volume is. Okay. Let's go back and check out what GME and AMC are doing. Oh, wow. AMC is nearing VWAP. Let me see if I can get a trade in, actually. Let me make sure I'm on AMC. Let's look at... I mean, all of these have really good volume. You can really just take your pick of the litter. Let me look at this $20 call. Go back to charts. Oh, sorry. There we go. Let me paste it in here. And let us buy, what is it currently trading at? $1.51. Are we going to see some more downside? Let's see if we can hit VWAP at least. If not, I might have to pull the trigger at $1.51. Fuck it. You know what? Hold on. Let's change this to ten. Dollar fifty three. Let's see if we get filled. All right, we got filled. So we have calls at a dollar fifty three, and let's see if we can ride this up. I will probably abandon the trade if we break below the two hundred day moving average. All right. So here are some some live day trading for you. But I will I will probably abandon the trade if we break below the 200 day moving average because that's where we've held support on the one minute all day, right? So let's see if we can uh, and and this price oscillator here is looking overheated. Let's see if we can get a bounce off of VWAP. Um, probably take profits if we hit around 1880. I'm curious to see what the the price of these these calls will be. Let's see. Time and sales. So with time and sales, the green, the green obviously means good because it means that 
the investor or the trader got filled at a at they're they're intently buying these calls, right? They got filled at the ask price or higher, right? Meaning that they they are rushing to to buy these calls. Okay, so we're up dollar fifty seven, dollar fifty eight. If we can break the twenty one EMA, that would be perfect. I could obviously take profits now. Dollar sixty. Remember, we bought these at a dollar fifty three. But if you if you wanted to take profits now, here let's pull up a, a calculator because this will allow you to see. So a dollar sixty divided by a dollar fifty three. I mean, that's already an almost 5% gain. You can even, if you wanted to, you could just set your sell here, right? Like if I if I set it at a dollar sixty, I can leave it there all day. The high on this option, this specific option that I'm trading right now, the high earlier was two dollars. So that would be amazing if we can get there, but we'll see. This is going, to, I mean, it's, it's, the market's only been open for an hour and 10 minutes. This is going to fluctuate all day. So I think that we can get around, oh, nice. We're jumping up now. We need to break this 21 EMA, 50 MA cross here. The 21 EMA is the, the white on my chart. The 50 MA is the orange on my chart. If we can break above this, then we will likely see that 1880 in the in the in the short run obviously i believe that we're going to fluctuate up and down all day so i'm not really too worried about it but i do want to break above this so that i can at least sell this call for some decent profits all right come on because if it breaks above nice if we can get to 1880 that would be swell i do think we we will hit 19 again today but i do want to sell these calls for you know what? Let's see. If I sold them at a dollar sixty, oh nice. I'm just gonna set my sell at a dollar sixty. And let's see if we can get there. Mm 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 dollar fifty seven. Come on, get to that red line. Oh, wouldn't that be a bitch if we don't? Mm -mm -mm. You know, we got to get some music in this. I usually have music. Maybe the music will, will help the stock go up. Oh, Groupon is up 5% today too. Nice. All right. Looks like it does not want to break above, man. It wants to wick above the 21 EMA. All right, we'll leave that open. Let's see. Oh, dub. Yeah, let's get a dub playlist going. All right. Cool. All right, let me go back to the uh, the chat. We'll leave this B and check on it later. But I don't want to take less than $1.60 for this call. So let's see if we can get there, actually. Not going our way. Hopefully, we bounce off VWAP. I might actually double up on these calls. If we hit VWAP or we hit the 200 MA, I will double up on these calls. Let's see. We'll check on it in a bit. All right. IMA. What did you say, my man? Oh, I already saw these. Did I miss any super chats, guys? Okay, Boris. SRPT, back in January, you talked about overreaction on the sell. You think the stock will bounce back. Um, would you recommend leaps? I mean, let's look at it. SRPT. I mean, it's still <laughs> funny enough. It's still trading around the, well, it broke below support, but I mean, this is, an extremely volatile pharmaceutical stock, right? But it definitely broke below support. I mean, why why wouldn't you have taken profits on this bounce here? Like, what what were you waiting for? I don't know what price you got in, but um, no, I definitely don't don't like this chart for sure. Especially since it's a company that's bleeding money like crazy. Um, 
you will likely have to hold this for a very long time. Now, there is a support level. There is a support level right around here, right? So I normally don't sell at support. If for some reason you want to keep your money in here and not put it in something else that might be better serving, fine. But, you know, it's, it is at support. But no, I definitely don't, don't like this, uh, this company or this chart. I just don't know, like, if you bought at this support level here that we outlined back in January, we had a very nice bounce. It bounced, um, you know, over 20%. Like, I don't know. I don't know if you got in then, but that's, you probably should have started thinking about taking profits then, um, or at least set, set a trailing stop limit. Right. But all right. Uh, what are the short term stocks we should buy right now? Um, are you talking about like for, for day trades? Put on that biggie. Gamble it up Z. I wouldn't buy. Wait, 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 wait. Z getting that WAP. I wouldn't buy Doge with your money. Turn the music up. Um, well, I don't want to. A lot of people get annoyed, man. <laughs> um, could you please share your toss trading grid? Yes. Hit me up. Hit me up on the website and I'll send it to you or on the Discord and I'll send it to you. Um. 208 likes hit it guys yes hit that like button i don't say that enough i lost 2700 on this one earlier this year I'm not sure what you're talking about bite now 20 calls okay slow moss yogi what's going on welcome to trading fam what is going on welcome welcome all right look at pay safe okay and then what ask a, ask a, a more poignant question man don't be lazy okay i'm looking at pay safe and then what what do you want me to do with this? Ah, <laughs> okay. All right. Let us go back to uh, to that trade. Okay. So we bounced off of VWAP. Let's see. But these, there's a lot of selling pressure, man. There's a lot of selling pressure. These, uh, there's a lot of a red here on the on these calls. Let's see what happens here. Like, do we drop below VWAP, retest the 200 MA on the one minute chart? Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> Either way, I'm going to leave my sell here because I know that that will eventually go back up later in the day. As I said, the market's only been open for an hour and 15 minutes. Speaking of the market, let's check on the market. So it looks like the SPY turned green up 0.15% or the, the S&P up 0.15%, the NASDAQ up 0.3%, and we have the Russell up 1.29%. Wow, big day for, uh, for, for mega caps, right? And the Dow Jones is up 0.12%. All right, respectable, right? Like I said, a flat day. We haven't had one of those in a very long time. I welcome those days because, you know, you don't always want to see insanely volatile movements. We need flat days. Um, which reminds me, I haven't done a market update yet either. Let me just look at uh, at where we're at here. Oh, shit. Okay. So it looks like we did drop near the 200 MA. I might buy more calls if we uh, if we're able to touch it. But I'm looking at these this time and sales here. Let me actually drill it down to 20 calls or more. It looks like a battle between the bulls and the bears here, right? It looks like a battle between the bulls and the bears here. There's just as many red orders or there, as there are green orders. So um, we'll see if we can push above the 200 MA again or not. Let's see. Let us see. All right. Let's take a look at uh, GME is also following kind of the same trajectory as AMC. So GME did bounce off the 200 minute moving average as well, but it is currently trading around VWAP. That's crazy, man. Like the trade is is very similar or the uh, the chart looks like it's it's very similar, right? 
That's very that's nuts. The chart looks like it's very similar. It, it's it's as if the, the traders are are trading both the same exact way. Either that or or you know, there's a lot of algo trading going on on both, right? As I said before, don't discount the hedge fund's ability to also play the the long position on these. All right. Let me get back to your questions. Um, da, 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 da. do you day trade on think or swim? That's what I'm doing, my man. <laughs> That's what you see in front of you. Yes. Uh, thank you for sharing your market experience. You're very welcome. Are you using trading view? Yes. I'm using trading view and think or swim. Sassan is great. That stock. Thank you through the storm in February till now and still going strong. Yes. I mean, it's crazy. You Vixie up 850%. No, you Vixie is not up 850%. Um, do you think TTCF is in a short squeeze? All right, let's take a look at TTCF. You know what? As I said, I do have this trusty platform here called Ortex, and we can actually look at TTCF and see if we can uh, glean anything from the end. Guys, hit that thumbs up button. Thank you for whoever the member, whoever the, the members are that, that are reminding me to say that. Hit that thumbs up button. Um, <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. TTCF, definitely. TTCF has higher short interest than AMC. <clears throat> so sorry. No, I'm not drinking soda or beer in the morning this is just water it's uh lacroix shout out to there's a, a member that is that is really big on on lacroix shout out to you you know who you are all right so ttcf actually has the the short interest is a lot higher than amc or gme which we'll take a look at in a second look at the days to cover the days to cover <laughs> Oh my God, dude. The days to cover on TTCF is over five. Now, days to cover just means the shares that are currently on loan, right? Divided by a certain uh, volume metric. In this case, the three-month daily volume of TTCF means that if the shorts have to cover, they will likely need this many days to cover all of the shorts that are currently out on the market. This is very high. For reference, I'll show you what AMC's is. AMC is probably a little over one. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Come on. Yeah, see AMC, the short, the uh, days to cover is 1.46 and the short interest is 19%. GME is probably even less than that. If we take a look at uh, at the short interest, yeah, the days to cover is less. Actually, GME is not highly shorted right now compared to, you know, how how it was in the uh, in the heyday. Like if you look at December thirty first, the short interest on GME was one hundred and seventeen percent. You remember I I was doing videos at that time saying that it should be a crime to naked short, meaning shorting more than the shares that are available. I have no problem with shorting, by the way, guys. I have no problem with shorting. I do it all the time. Again, I'm not a uh, sort of a, a moralist when it comes to the markets. If it's legal for me to do, I'm going to take every advantage to extract every dollar that I can from the free markets. That is the game which we play. There are no moral victories here, right? So I have no problem with shorting. I do have a problem with shorting over a uh, hundred percent of the shares available because one that is illegal and two it creates fake downward pressure or artificial downward pressure on a stock especially a stock of a company that might be struggling at the time right and and that i don't agree with because it is illegal and it is a basically an illegal mechanism in order to try and make money so i was happy when melvin capital and, and some of those other hedge funds uh, we're getting we're getting blasted because of it. But point is, the short interest on GME was actually over 100% if we go back to the December, January days. And currently, it's only trading at just below 20%, which compared to normal stocks is really high. But nowhere near TTCF, which is what I think 
should be focused on if you're looking to potentially take advantage of a short squeeze play. This is insane. Days to cover is over five. Short interest is around 38% according to Ortex, right? Wow. Yeah, there's 9.2 million shares on loan. I wonder how much it costs to borrow this. This should be here somewhere. Cost to borrow. Yeah, wow, 30, 31% cost to borrow. The, or sorry, that's the minimum. The average is 36% cost to borrow. That's crazy. So when you short shares, the exchange basically loans them to you, right? And that usually comes with, with an interest, an interest charge. So that's what cost to borrow means is if, if you do want to short those shares, you have to pay the platform or the exchange or the market makers basically interest in order to, to short those. But TTCF, huh? This might be interesting. I might be overlooking a TTCF trade here. Let's see. AMC bounced very nicely off close to the 200 day MA, but it is finding resistance currently at the 50 MA on the one minute. So let's see. Um, but yes, let's take a look at, at TTCF, man. I might be overlooking a trade here. Good God almighty. This chart set up, ah, oh, my freaking shit. Hindsight is 2020. okay? As I told you before, with selling too early, even experienced traders will always have uh, missed opportunities, right? Even, like, forget the short interest. Forget that. Just looking at this chart setup here, this right here is called a double bottom, right? This is a very bullish accumulation pattern. Especially, actually, you can even call it a triple bottom if you include the 2020 price action. Jesus Christ. Triple bottom sitting at the 300-day moving average, which is the red on my chart. And you combine that with, the, and by the way, I'm walking, obviously, retrospectively, I'm walking through this, but showing you how I, I would think of the trade if, if it was something that was on my radar. Obviously, I'm trading all day. I'm trading a million things, including crypto, which I have not received any crypto questions, which is fine. But if you do have them, leave them in the chat. But just to show you what my train of thought would be as someone who's been in the markets for a long time, right? You, you want what's called confluence. Confluence is basically taking a series of indicators and using them to your advantage to try to formulate one signal. So you want a series of indicators and data points telling you the same thing over and over and over again. And you can collate all of those data points in order to formulate a conclusion whether you should go long or short a certain stock or a certain asset, right? So if I saw that the days to cover on TTCF was five, if I saw that the short interest was continuing to accumulate, I mean, it went from, you know, two mil shares short to three to four to six to eight to 13 now 14 this is an exponential increase in shares short the short percentage is 38 percent the cost to borrow is going up take that put it in your hip pocket go back to the chart if you know how to read charts right i do have an intro to technical analysis but you should definitely watch that and then go watch other videos that go into depth about certain patterns or certain indicators that, that you want to read, you see this triple bottom, you see the uh, the fact that we're sitting at the 300 day moving average. And even then, if you take, if you isolate it to just recent price action, we had a double bottom at the 300 day moving average. Oh my God, how the fuck did I miss this one? This is such, I can't even, oh my God, man. <sighs> Sometimes the markets have a way of pissing you off. <laughs> Not only that, I mean, it's clear as day. We broke out of the descending channel, double bottom, 300 MA, triple bottom over the long term, going all the way back to last year. This breakout here, <sighs> you guys don't even know. When I turn the camera off, I'm probably going to go beat myself.
<laughs> I mean, this, this is like self-torture. Why didn't one of you guys tell me about this? There's thousands of people in the Discord. Why didn't anyone point this out to me? <laughs> Just kidding. It's my job, not yours. But, I mean, you don't often get setups this perfect with that many indicators, that many data points telling you the same thing. I mean, this, this would have been, honestly, would have been the trade of 2021. Fuck me, man. Anyway, yes, there's still an opportunity here, but I would wait for TTCF to cool off here, okay? And, and we didn't even, you know, talk about it, its fundamentals, but I would wait for TTCF to cool off here. Maybe look at it on the, uh, on the shorter time frames, right? Like the one hour chart, maybe even less, maybe even the 15 minute chart. And uh, yeah, obviously on the 15 minute, you can see here, it's clearly respecting the 50, the 50 moving average, which is the orange line on my chart on the, uh, the 15 minute. But that's where I would long it from, from next. However, it's going to be very hard to sleep at night. Now, retrospectively looking at or retroactively looking at this, it's going to be very hard to sleep at night. All right. Well, in lieu of torturing myself, let me take a look at, uh, at the chat. So are we hopping on TTCF? Uh, I just talked about it. I would wait for for a retracement for sure. Um, do you think TTCF is in a short squeeze? Yeah, man. Oh, well, maybe I was responding to you, but my whole entire five minute diatribe on TTCF was in response to, uh, to you. you. You, Vixie, had a 10 for one split. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that you made money off of that. These are leveraged ETFs. Leveraged ETFs always do reverse splits, especially leveraged inverse ETFs because they, they can't, you know, they drop so low that they have to reverse split in order to remain uh, at, at, a, uh, at a price point that, that's realistic. But it does not mean that you made money. A reverse split just means that you have more shares but the total number of shares times the price, you have an equal number, um, or sorry, an equal value. Your pot is is an equal value, right? It does not mean you made money off a 10 for one reverse split, right? They just take the number of shares that you have, they multiply the price by 10, and you multiply the number of shares that you have by 10. So the distribution is, or the, the distribution is, is what's different. It's like taking a $100 bill, right? And splitting it into $25 bills. You still have $100, but you just have more bills now. And the the price is, is less, right? That's what splits are like. But this is a reverse split. So it's as if you had $25 bills, and now someone gave you a $100 bill, right? You didn't make money off of a reverse split. Um, all right. Da -da 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 -da. Let me see. Did I miss any super chats? I do not want to be missing any super chats. Bob Law. Now I'm beating myself up. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Hugh, Hugo laughing at my pain. Beat yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, dude, that's how I feel. Uh, what play would you do now in TTCF? Call and ask. I just answered that. I would wait for a, a retracement. I sold TTCF 17, blah, blah, blah. Is Amazon breaking out? I mean, come on, man. Like, if you're not in Amazon, I don't know what you're doing. If you're not in Amazon and you're thinking of buying it, you know, $3,300, cool. <laughs> you should have already been in Amazon, honestly. Um, Amazon is, is no, it's not breaking out. Um, it has resistance at $3,550 around there. It's been trading in this channel for almost a year now. Um, so... Yeah, if it's breaking out, it would break out of this channel. Eventually, it will break out. I mean, Amazon is probably going to be a four or five thousand dollar stock in, you know, in a few years or so. So, um, let's go back to think or swim. Damn, AMC seems to be stuck here at the uh, at VWAP, huh? Interesting. Very interesting. But again, in, in the morning, it was stuck here at the 200 MA before breaking out. So let's see if we can get a, a bounce off of, off of VWAP here. Actually, I might put in, 
I might put in more calls. I'm going to average in to these calls here at, at VWAP. Let's see. 114. Let's see if we can get filled at 114 and average down our calls. Come on, don't run away from me. Andrew Hardeth donated five dollars. Okay, let me let me get to your uh while AMC is being sleepy here. Let me get to your question. And Jolene too. All right. What's up, Jolene? Let me get to your question as well. Yeah, I mean both uh both GME and AMC currently sitting well GM AMC is currently sitting sitting right around VWAP and okay now it's looking like it wants to break out hold on I'm gonna get to your uh, super chat questions guys let me just see if we can get above the 50 minute moving average here very important to break out of this if we are to return back to $19 we need to close above a close on the one minute above the uh the 50 minute moving average Ah, my order never filled here. I'm going to cancel the, the buy order. And see what we can get to. All right. looks like it's breaking out. And we do have a lot of green coming in for the, for this uh, May 28th call. Right? So, I f oh, wow. We have 220 calls coming in just a few seconds ago. Come on. Break out. Yeah, let's see if we can break out. All right, I'm going to go back to your uh, super chats and then I'll get back to this. See if, uh, I mean, we did close above the 50 minute moving average on the last minute's candle and we started a new candle here. So let's see if we can actually break out and potentially hit that 18, 1880 price point. At which point I might offload these these calls and then get back in if, if we hit the uh, VWAP or, or the 200 MA. Let's see. All right, let me get to some stuff that I missed. I know I missed a couple of super chats. Didn't I? Hold on. Uh, Jolene, thank you for all you do. Appreciate you, Jolene. You really don't have to do that. Honestly, you don't have to do that, but I appreciate you. And NDM is breaking out. I actually have calls on NNDM. Andrew Hardrath, I just tuned in. Can you check Ford stock? I'm unclear whether I should take profits soon. I mean, dude, it depends on your investment horizon. How how would I answer this for you, right? Like, are you a long-term investor or are you a swing trader? Um, if you're a swing trader, yes, you want to think about taking profits. Use what is called a trailing stop. A trailing stop, let's see Ford. If this isn't, come on. Uh, why is this being a slow shit right now? God damn trading view. Continue. All right. Um, wow. Ford is breaking out. Hell yeah. We drew this line just a few minutes ago. Ford is now breaking out on top. So let's see if, if, if we can close above this line. We will likely have more upside on Ford. Um, I mean, you see that the MACD is still going strong. You want to wait for the MACD to start curling. And then I would potentially, or, or I would, if I was in your shoes, if you're a short-term trader, I would set a trailing stop limit, right? A trailing stop means that, let's just say Ford right now is, uh, hit a high of 1395. If you set a minus 5% trailing stop, if Ford keeps going up, then at any point, from the high that it starts dropping by 5% or more, your position would exit for a profit. So if you're a short-term trader, I would think about doing this now. But Ford looks like it is breaking out. Um, hopefully, we can close above $14 and start a new rally to potentially the, the, the uh, $20 mark. So let's see what happens. But yes, yeah, set a trailing stop if you're a short-term trader. If you're a long-term trader, then there's no reason to take profits on, on Ford. 
So this whole question of should I sell really depends on you and your investment horizon. Nobody can ask that for you. Uh, again, I appreciate you, Jolene. You, you don't have to do that. Again, thank you so much. Um, have a look at NNDM. Riot is flying today. TGP is a penny you recommended to hold. I'm up 60%. Yes, I did. This was a long time ago. Can you show some day trading on Tastyworks? Uh, not today, no. Um, because I, I don't want to open up too many exchanges. My computer is already running hot from the uh, mirrorless camera that I have running here. I got the trading view app running. I got Thinkorswim running. I got the stream uh, software running. I got Ortex running. No, nah, I'm not going to open up a, another exchange today, but maybe in the future. However, I will tell you, spoiler alert, it is not as robust as Thinkorswim. It does not have the active trader, the time and sales, that type of stuff. It does not have layouts like that. So if you are really wanting to get into day trading, open up a TD Ameritrade account and get Thinkorswim for free. Are you closing your VIX hedge? No. Why would I close it? It's a hedge. Riot is flying today. What do you think of Coinbase stock? Check out my, I already talked about it. Check out my, my video from yesterday. Um, all right, let's check out Riot. Yeah, Riot is, is up 12.4%. Is Bitcoin up today? Let's see. Those of you that have been crying about Bitcoin, you know, passing you by, um, and not being able to get in cheaper, Bitcoin was at a 50% discount. Hopefully you guys uh, took that. Remember a famous saying that, that I always say, the markets is the, is the only place in town where folks don't line up for the sale, right? If I told you that, um, I don't know, if I told you that PS5s were on sale for half off, if I told you that Lamborghinis were on sale for half off, if I told you that Louis Vuitton handbags, that Louis Vuitton was having a, you know, a one of a kind, 50% off sale, everyone would be lining up for that stuff, man. If if Bitcoin is, is down by 50% and you've always wanted to own Bitcoin, once it actually does retrace 50% and hits a 300 day moving average, all of a sudden there's no buyers, right? So anyway, if you wanted to own Bitcoin, 50% discount. Um, but now it's, it looks like it, it, it needs to close above the 200 day moving average Bitcoin does, right? But it, it, it does have, it, it is on an update. Technically it's almost up 2%, but you see Riot up 12%. Mara is probably up as well. If Riot is up, Yeah, Mar is up by, by the same amount. So, and I think this might be on the heels of the good news, I guess, that uh, Elon and a bunch of other conglomerates are looking for more ethical and efficient ways from a, a, an electricity and energy usage standpoint to, to mine. This, this, this might be up because of that, right? Um, all right, let us go back and look at AMC. Let's look at GME right real quick. Yeah, I think GME actually has more room to run, I'll be honest. Um, now their earnings are coming up. Let's see, what did it do the last time we had an apeshit run? It actually tanked 33% on earnings last time. So, and their earnings are being reported, what, May 26th? Is this right? Let's see. Let me see if I missed any chats. I don't think I did. Again, because I, I made it a point not to ignore you guys. Um, but did, uh, what was I going to ask? Oh, yeah. Does GME report earnings? This week, I think they do. Let me look up my favorite earnings site. Earnings whispers. There it is. For those of you that want a the best free earnings resource, look up earnings whispers on Twitter. But they they tell you uh, every single day that they'll they'll tell you what stocks are are reporting earnings that day. So after the close. I don't see GME here. Huh. Let's see their uh, 
their weekly chart. So this is the week of 24th. Yeah, I don't see GME here, unless I'm blind. I don't think GME reports this week. Why does TradingView say that they report this week? Let's see. If anybody knows, put it in the chat. Tell me when uh, when GME is reporting earnings. Let me know. And by the way, guys, hit that thumbs up. Thank you. But put it in the uh, in the chat. Let me know. Let me know when uh, when GME is is reporting earnings because I don't see it here. Honestly. All right. Caleb, everyone hit that <laughs> for Z. He's bad. Caleb, you don't need to do that, man. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you. Oh, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get back to 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 your your message. Um, about the other thing. <laughs> hey Z, one of my buddy wants to sign up with the options course. Is there a coupon code? Um, I think the last coupon code expired May first, so not not for a while, but uh, but yeah. You can you can hit that link and, and, and sign up for sure. Six eight. Okay, thank you guys. So it seems to be the consensus is six eight. Hey Z, should I wait for June to join Patreon? Yes. Um so don't join now. Join on the first if you're joining through Patreon, because they will charge you now and then they'll charge again on the first, which I don't agree with. But yeah. Stop loss on AMC, average price seventeen. Um, I mean, what is your what is your investment horizon, man? Um, you know, are, are you... It, look, I know that, that we are, you know, we're, we're all at, at different uh, skill levels. We're all at different experience levels. But if you're asking, then you probably shouldn't be trading AMC and GME. I'll be honest. Um, because if you're already day trading these things, then you would already know where to set your stop loss, right? I did a whole video on stop losses. Go and watch that. It's a great resource, but it talks about how to figure out when to set your when and where to set your stop loss, right? Um, I definitely think you should watch that because it's really all based on risk reward. If you're planning on gaining 20% from a stock, you definitely don't want a risk reward ratio of greater than one, meaning you don't want your stop loss to be less or, or sorry, more than 20% down from your entry. If you're only planning on making 20% on the trade, a lot of uh, traders even, even have that more conservative at a 0.5 ratio, right? Where if they're looking to gain 20% from a stock, they won't have their stop loss at uh, greater than, than 10% down from, from where they bought. So, but honestly, if you're engaging in these high risk trades, um, you definitely, you definitely should, should know this stuff, right? You should not be relying on, on other people to tell you, um, again, it's, it's great. It's, it's, it's all in well, if you're still learning, if, um, you know, you're still a beginner, I'm not, I'm not deriding you for, for the question. Um, but just saying, if you're going to be trading something that's really that risky, you should already have an idea of where you're going to put your, your stop loss, right? And, and the same thing goes for, for taking profit. A lot of times I hear people say, should I take profit? Well, how do I know? I'm not you, right? I, I, I don't live in your bank account. I don't live in your pockets. How would I know what's good profit for you? Some people are going to be very happy with 20% profits. Some people are going to be are not going to be happy until they hit 100% profits, right? This is different for everybody. Figure out what type of person you are. What uh, tugs at, at your emotional heartstrings, right? Like, are you going to be pissed if you miss 20% profits in lieu of potentially going for a bigger home run? Some people are going to be pissed, right? And some people are not. So, all right. Uh, look at AMC. Oh, God. What is AMC doing now? <laughs> nice. All right, you know what? I'm going to cancel out these. I'm going to I'm going to lower my uh I'm going to sell these at 158. Let's see. Cuz we're currently at 155. Actually, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh confirm and send. All right. So we sold them at 160 and 161. Awesome. There you go. Live day trading. So on that trade, we made, because we bought them at 153, remember? 
and we sold them at 161. Amazing. So we hit our target. There you go. If anybody asks you who to go to on YouTube for live day trading, tell them to come to this channel. <laughs> I just demonstrated you in real time how you could do it with options. And remember, these aren't shares. I did this with options. So yeah, AMC is back at, at $19, man. Bounced off of VWAP, off the one minute VWAP, like a fucking champ, bro. So we made a respectable 5% on that trade, right? Um, so yeah, man, that's, uh, that's definitely lunch money. But you can keep doing this over and over again. Obviously, you know, for the purposes of this video, I want to provide you guys with... Uh, entertainment and education and whatnot but see look it's finding resistance at at 19 again wow amazing so in this case here's what i would do if i was doing this like if i didn't have a video to, to record and i didn't have to entertain you guys like a monkey <laughs> i'm just kidding i love this but here here's what i would do i would now be like okay we have enough data points to draw our resistance line right so you have a resistance line or a resistance zone right here, right? We now have enough data points, man. Remember, I was saying in the beginning of the video that resistance is a lot harder to uh, to figure out than support because, especially at, at a breakout, because we tend to bounce off support. But on resistance, we don't have any um, any ceilings above this besides what the price naturally creates, right? Holy shit, we're breaking out of 19. God damn it, sold too early. But see, I could have sold these calls now for $1.76, the ones that I bought for $1.53. Um, but that was just for, for example purposes, right? Um, if, I was, if I was really intently paying attention to this and not trying to explain it in real time, I would have drawn this resistance level where I drew it and see if we, holy shit. Damn, that would have been, really nice profits we are overheating now on the one minute rsi so i would expect a pullback it would be very interesting to see if we can retest if we can test this resistance zone as support or if we will just fall through let's see if this will become the new floor because we are overheating a fuck ton right now on the uh, rsi the five minute chart you could see the breakout a lot clearer on the on this five minute candle here But, uh, but what I was saying is I would have drawn that resistance line and seen if we are starting to creep up on the one minute chart and would have stayed in the trade if, if we did start to creep up and because you will eventually either break out or break down, right? But, uh, but yeah, and then based on the time and sales that you see here, if you're wondering whether you could have prematurely purchased puts there, well, based on the time and sales here, obviously I'm speaking retroactively, but I'm just walking through what a, a day trader's mind frame would be like, right? So if you look at the time and sales here and you see that there's a shit ton of calls coming for AMC, you might be less inclined to open up puts just yet because you could see all of the, the rabid buying. I mean, you have a, an order here of 396 options, call options for the specific option that I, that I just sold for profit, that same option. You have 396, 147. So there is way more calls coming in um, than, than there is bearish action. Okay, so now we're starting to retrace. As I said, we have an overheated RSI an overheated price oscillator. Let's see if we if we use this nineteen dollars as support, or do we just fall crash through the floor? I'd be very interested to see that. Um, I missed some super chats, so I definitely don't want to ignore those. But I also don't want to. Uh, <laughs> I'm glued to the screen right now, man. This is like watching a fucking '80s action movie. All right. You know what? No reason why I can't pull it up side by side, right? You need the diamond hand. You know what? Look, find me somebody else. No, nah, okay, I won't say that. <laughs> Any thoughts on SFT? Yes, thoughts and prayers. I, I Message won't send with my question, so here's a fiver anyway. Oh, uh, I'll go back and look for your question, Jack. Um, sorry, about the thoughts and prayers. I mean, I... I Appreciate the super chat. I really hate the thoughts question. It's super lazy. Um, doesn't give me any context whether 
you know, you're a short-term trader, a long-term investor. Are you looking at this stuff from a fundamental standpoint? Are you just wanting a technical breakdown? Like, please, guys, you know, whether they're, <clears throat> they're super chats or not, please, like, chill with the thoughts questions. Um, fun fact, in, in the Discord, we, we actually don't, don't allow those, right? Like, nobody responds to, to the thoughts questions. They're low-effort questions, right? Even if you go on, uh, on the stock message boards on, on Reddit and you say thoughts on blah, 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 nobody's going to respond to you. So I need a little bit more context. Um, but since you didn't provide it, I'm going to just do whatever the hell I want and look up the chart. I don't know if you were interested in a short-term trade or a long-term trade. <clears throat> um, shift. Okay. I actually like this chart right off the bat. I like this chart. Um, shift at one point, I think was considered a reopening play, but the reason I like this chart is because you can actually have a low risk trade here. If you enter here with the hopes that we see a double bottom bounce with profit taking at around first profit taking level, it says around 760 and then potentially like the 850 range. Um, you could set a stop limit, you know, below your, your entry below this, this support level here at around $6, right? So you can enter at 690, set a, a stop limit at around six and, uh, and you'd be chill and you could potentially ride this up. So I do like the, this, this chart setup a lot. Um, all right, Jack, what were you trying to say, man? Thank you for the super chat, but what were you trying to say? I can't find I can't find your question, man. Try sending it again. Yeah, okay, OG Smirnoff. Yes. Yes. I I like the uh the swing trade here. As I said, you could enter here, set a stop limit at around six dollars and just leave it be, right? And you can go to bed at night knowing that, that you have a stop limit. But I definitely like like this chart if you're a you know looking for a volatile um, swing trade for sure. Um, we don't sell AMC, we hold. All right, bro. Um, no one sell AMC until June second. I mean, if you're trading options, uh, you probably should be selling because they're timed instruments. If you're talking about the stock, all right, sure. Research AMC to 500k. It's real what's real? Nobody, <laughs> I just shorted AMC because everyone is a liar. Um, I wouldn't short it either unless again, you are, you know, you know how to, oh wow, we did find support, man. Dude, technicals are freaking amazing, dude. Technical analysis is freaking amazing. This is, this is what you want to see here. Yeah, this is definitely what, what you want to see here. All right, guys, I'm going to be right, right back. Just hold that thought for one second, okay? I'm going to be right back. Leave me your, your questions in the, in, the, in the chat, but uh, I got to get more coffee and potentially uh, take a piss break. So <laughs> one second, I'll be right back, all right? Um, I'm, I'm not diamond, I'm not diamond handing this, this, this pee right now, all right? Mm, mm, mm. One second. All right. All right. I'll be right back. Pay attention to uh, here. I'm going to leave the chat up and you guys can pay attention to the one minute and the five minute chart on on AMC. Actually, you know what? I'll go to the flexible grid because you have AM, you have AMC on the left and GME on the right. And I promise you I will be right back.
All right, guys, let me turn this back on. Uh, all right, back. Sorry, sorry to leave you hanging. Uh, glad we didn't lose. Uh, wow, it looks like we didn't lose anybody. You guys are real ones for sticking in there. All right. Um, anything that I miss? Okay, Jack Crabtree. Question should be just below. I know DCA is best. Okay, Jack. I know DCA is best long run, but but closing below the 21 EMA in the weekly is scary stuff. No, it's not. And the short-term mid-price action. Are you talking about for BTC? Looks like a potential wick off district. Yeah, dude. But look, this is... Look. DCA. Oh, shit. We just closed... Uh, we, we created a double top on AMC and just closed below support. Let's see if we get back to VWAP. And by the way, there will likely be a time today where <clears throat> on the one minute chart, we will drop below VWAP and we will likely buy calls again at this level if we get to like the 1750 range. That would be, oh my God, that would be amazing. Anyway. Um, back to your question, Jack. No, the, the, the thing is, um, with DCA, it does not matter what's going on. Like, yes, it's scary in the short term, but look, you would just go on your phone. I have the cash app, right? You would go, you would go on your phone, like on the cash app. Um, see this right here. Let's see if you can see this, but you go on the phone on the cash app or something similar where you can buy Bitcoin instantly, you don't even look at the price, dude. This is what DCA is, is for. Regardless, like if, if, if at your job you get paid every week or, or sorry, every two weeks or every month, um, then you would set a schedule for yourself according to your budget. And regardless of what the price is, right? Regardless of what the price is, you buy the same amount of BTC every single increment. That's what DCA is, man. Like, trust me, I've been in, in, in Bitcoin for the longest time, dude. Um, well, not longer than, than some people, but I've been in Bitcoin. I've been trading Bitcoin for almost five years, okay? If you have a high conviction in Bitcoin, then you don't even need to look at the day-to-day -day price. Obviously, sprinkling in some leverage trades and swing trades is really fun. But this is Bitcoin going all the way back to 10 years. Same exact... Uh, price action, right? Long accumulation patterns. Yes, you have to have a lot of patience here, but we're talking about investing, not trading. Who gives a shit whether it falls below the, the 21 EMA or not, right? The 21 weekly EMA, yes, it does signal, it, and I've said this before, the 21 weekly EMA, if we fall below it on the weekly, it will likely indicate the next crash. And we dropped by 50%, right? And we could still drop some more. Like we could retest the 24K range. Um, certainly we could. And there's a, a gap fill below there. But my point is DCA takes into account every single um, price level there is. So yes, you will be buying at 38. But if it drops to 24, you'll also be buying at 24. If it goes back up to 30, you'll also be buying at 30. Like it's, it's crazy how over time your average price works out if you are consistent with it. And, and as I said in, in my video, if you know how to read a chart and you disproportionately load up on major support levels, then you can even make it work for you uh, more efficiently, right? So if you're DCAing $1,000 a month or whatever, $100 a month in Bitcoin, and then you hit the 200 weekly MA and you're like, freak, okay, this is when I should load the boat, right? And you disproportionately load in at the 200 MA, then your DCA will work even better. But if you don't have a high conviction in Bitcoin, which it sounds like you don't, that's perfectly fine, man. You don't have to listen to anybody. You don't have to listen to me. You don't have, have to listen to YouTube. You don't have to listen to, to whoever. If you have a high conviction, if you don't have a high conviction in Bitcoin and you're very worried about it in the short term, you know, citing wick off or whatever, then yeah, don't. Don't. But I mean, time... You know, time shows that DCA works, whether you're talking about gold, the stock market, Bitcoin, whatever. And it works the best. The best DCA asset in history 
has been Bitcoin. And that's an objective truth, right? That's not uh, subjective. That's not emotional. That's based off of data points. So rent over. <laughs> but there you have it. Um, somebody else. Have a look at Blink. 38% short float and a double bottom. Okay. See, I like questions like this. Um, I love people who say technical analysis is astronomy. Yes, bald nightmare. This is this is one. That's one of the stupidest things ever, dude. Because <clears throat> technical analysis is not data that comes from the stars or the heavens, right? Technical analysis. This right here, what you see in front of you, this is the collection of every single person's mentality and every single person's trade is mapped out on the chart. These, this is data, right? When, when, you, when a car insurance companies are looking how to price car insurance rates, they're looking at data, a previous data. How did drivers behave, right? How many ac accidents were there? What was the average uh, loss value of, of each accident? Same thing with, with trading. When we're looking to see how the market would react, we need to see how they reacted before to certain price points. So I completely agree with you. Um, all right, so Blink. Let's take a look at Blink. Well, Blink, this is the weekly chart for Blink. This is actually called a bull flag on the weekly chart. I'll take a look at the daily because you did mention something about a double bottom. But fun fact, uh, Blink actually did this last year. I remember this because we traded this breakout. But Blink formed a bull flag here, and it is now forming another bull flag, sir, which you see here, right? So you can actually trade this, this breakout. You don't even need to trade it now. You can wait until Blink, pull up the weekly chart, wait until Blink breaks out of this, and you could trade the breakout from this, right? But let's take a look at the daily chart. And let me erase all of this madness that, that I drew. Whoops. No, 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 not that. Okay. Uh, yes, this is a double bottom. Good catch. Off of the 200-day the moving average, too. Um, yeah, good catch. All right. And let me go back to... The short interest using Ortex. Let's take a look at the short interest. Man, I'm, I, I will never look at Tattoo Chef again. That's how pissed I am. <clears throat> oh, yeah. This is also high short interest. Um, I, I just want to put a rumor to rest, right? Or not a rumor, but I guess a misconception. Just because something has short interest doesn't mean it's going to go up, right? You need a wave of buyers, right? That's why the Wall Street bets AMC thing works. You need a, a wave of buyers to come in and uh, push that that price up and force that that sh they, that that short squeeze. But short squeezes don't happen without a disproportionate amount of volume. So I just want to, to make sure that you guys understand that just because something has a high short interest doesn't mean it's going to see a short squeeze. As a matter of fact, most stocks with high short interest don't end up seeing a short squeeze, but stocks that are highly traded, like when Tesla had insanely high short interest or AMC or GME, um, it's because the volume is coming in to help propel that short interest. So I want you guys to know that excuse me, for the future so that you're not wasting money on, uh, on short interest. All right. Um, cool. All right. So yes, short interest on the, is, is, is super high, but you do want to take a look at volume data for, for blink and see if we're actually getting abnormal volume or not. Uh, where would I look at this volume, 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 we have insider momentum. Yeah. I'm not used to or text besides looking up short interest. I'm not used to or Texas. Um, 
let's see if we can find it off of here. Um, yeah, let me actually not waste time with this and I'll, I'll look it up the way that, that I know how, um, but let's look up blinks volume. So in terms of volume, blink is actually not seeing a lot of volume, right? So propelling that short squeeze is going to be difficult. So you see, obviously, there was a ton of volume back in 2020, which is part of the reason that Blink jumped all the way up to 60 bucks or above. But the volume is looking so sleepy, man. The, the good news is that there aren't a lot of people selling, which is why the OBV is still high. But, you know, um, volume is not coming in for, for Blink. So don't expect a, a short squeeze, man. Don't expect a, a short squeeze on, on, uh, on Blink until we get, until we get volume. Um, Let's look at uh, what AMC is doing right now. 1915. This is a nice gap up, man. I'll be very interested to see what happens at $20.50, which is where we stopped last time. Like, I, you know, I do think that the momentum can actually keep driving this thing higher. Um, and GME, which has a very similar looking chart, obviously a much different price point. There looks to be, I, I believe we can break 300, I'll be honest. Um, now, I'm not saying we're going to do this today, but I believe we can break 300 if the momentum keeps going. Volume did die down for a while, but we see volume picking up today. If you look at, God, how do I get this earnings thing out of the way? But you could see that the, the volume right now um, is actually above the the moving average for, for the volume, which is the, the orange line. So we're starting to see volume pick back up for, for GameStop, um, for sure. All right, let me see if there are any messages in the chat. Great presentation. As a new trader following some of your advice has certainly helped with analysis. I appreciate you. Um, ISO, LMAO. Wow, what an idiot. Okay. Hey, everyone, don't hold. What? God damn it, I hate when this doesn't. NNDM has high short interest. Why is Tesla shooting up? I don't think Tesla is shooting up, but Tesla is trading sideways and everyone wants to think of this thing as, you know, as up or down. And a lot of times stocks will trade sideways. But Tesla, look, I mean, Tesla was trading below 600 bucks at, you know, right below the 200 MA. Like why, if you wanted to own Tesla, why wouldn't you buy it there? Actually, we sold um, puts on Tesla that are currently up. They are currently nice and up. Let's see if I can get to that, uh, monitor tab. Yeah, we're up almost 80, 80% 80 on this Tesla short put that, that I have here. We sold the 450 put on Tesla, which is a freaking joke. And I was, you know, I would take that opportunity all day, every day. Um, our Okta trade currently up 27%. JD, wow, up 250%. NVIDIA, that, that's the iron condor I was talking about. AMC, I'm still in an AMC trade? I thought I sold it. Uh, it might have sold some and not not all. I have to go back and check on that. And VIX is, is my hedge, right? So it's a much smaller position than the rest of my portfolio. But I'm I'm happy to, to open a hedge here when the market is, is looking shaky. So I will likely keep that open for another few days. Um but yeah, selling a short put on Tesla at 450. I mean, that is easy money, let's just say. And we sold it for um, a good amount of money. I believe it was $735. Yeah, sold it for 735, currently up 80% on it. So happy, definitely happy to take that trade anytime Tesla falls below. Um below the uh below $600. So all right. Is NEO a good investment? Yeah, but it will likely trade sideways for a long time. Um, AMC, baby. NEO is a great investment. I, I mean, it's a good investment uh, at this price point. I wouldn't say it's a great investment at this price point. Um, it, NEO and Tesla both need to prove a lot. I did a cover call on Tesla at 610. Now it's 620. Can you give me advice? Uh, you're not going... No, don't buy the callback for a loss. Just leave it be. If you did a cover call, leave it be. 
um, the, the, the covered call itself is going to look like it's down. But either you get your shares called or Tesla drops back below your covered call and you keep the money. But don't, guys, don't sell covered calls and cash secure puts if you're planning on closing them for a loss. It defeats the entire purpose. Just let them play out. Um, what do you think of Lucid? I think Lucid is going to potentially fail royally. Um, and when I say fail, I mean, yes, it's, it's a car company. It's going to produce cars. But I think at its price point, look, which would you rather have, a Lucid or a Porsche Taycan, right? Or a, an Audi e-tron. The, the e-tron was an e-tron GT. Oh, my God, that car is so sexy, man. Oh my God, that car is so sexy. Like I would much rather have those cars. Like Lucid is coming in at, at those price points, right? So yeah, I would I would much rather um I would much rather have those cars than than spending money on, on Lucid. Um all right. Let me move this out of the way. One second. All right. Um so let me get to Ray's question. Ray says, what do you think of BDRY for the next two months? This monster ETF went up 200% for the past year already. Okay. Uh, double top, first thing that I see. Um, but what is, what is in this? What is in this ETF? Do you know? Shipping, bulk shipping ETF. You know what's funny is I, I'm... I'm uh, I bought uh, um, shares a long time ago in GSL, speaking of shipping, and that is an, an absolute beast. But yeah, I'm not sure what, what is what is in this ETF in BDRY. You're going to make me look it up. BDRY ETF. Let's see what's in this. Holdings. Breakwave dry bulk shipping. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, obviously, this is a, a recovery play, right? Because of the supply chains returning back to, or at least the hope is that they return back to to normal after the reopenings, right? But uh, top 15 holdings. First American Funds Treasury Obligations Fund. Dude, I honestly have no idea what this is. First American Funds Treasury Obligations Fund, U.S. Dollar and Derivative Securities Other. What, what is in this? Do you know? Are you just are you just referencing it because the the, the price shot up? B. D R Y E T F. I'm struggling to find out what is in this ETF so that I can t give you my opinion on it. Uh, top 10 holdings cash and other 99%. Okay, whatever. Charter base ticker. Okay. Baltic Cape. So, okay, this looks, this looks more. This looks more accurate. So this is basically ho holding a bunch of shipping derivatives here, right? Um, yeah, I mean, based on this chart, I don't, I mean, yeah, I guess it created a double top and is now potentially at support. Um, so you could ent make an entry here, but... I, I don't know. I mean, this is trading higher than it was pre-pandemic. So I'm not sure what, what you're expecting here. 
Um, me personally, I probably wouldn't enter this unless it retests one of the major moving averages. Um, you know, maybe the 50 day moving average, if you're really gung ho about this ETF for some reason, but yeah, I mean, it's already trading higher than it was pre pandemic. So, um, All right, let's look at AMC again. AMC to test 52 week high today. Yep, yeah, that, I just said that for sure. All right, let's look at it once again. All right, let me bring it in frame here. All right. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's acting like a boss, man. It um, it retested the resistance as support, fell below, and now it is uh, it is shooting past resistance, creating new highs for the day. But like I said, I think we will get to that twenty dollars and fifty cents today. The twenty dollars and fifty cents comes from the previous high which was january right i do think we get to that today and this this by the way these are called three white soldiers or three green soldiers but charts used to be black and white now we have some color so they're called three green soldiers <laughs> three white soldiers sounds hilarious <laughs> it sounds like a racial comedy skit but um these are called three green soldiers right when you see three full-bodied candles like this so yeah i think it's inevitable that we get to 2050 um maybe by today if momentum keeps pushing right like if, if volume keeps pushing um let's take a look at the volume yeah so the volume on amc is coming in hot right so anytime you see volume pop above this orange line here on trading view this orange line here is is basically the 20 moving average the 20 day moving average for volume so the amount of volume that we're seeing now surpasses what we saw obviously uh, the last uh, 20 days or, or the average for the last 20 days. So you want to see these green candles here coincide with large volume bars surpassing the the average, right? So yeah, man. Um, I think uh, I think we easily get to to twenty dollars and fifty cents in, in the next day or two for sure. Let's look at uh let's look at GME. I want to put in a trade on on GME as well. I think GME leading up to earnings, we could see that $300 mark, man. Um, just like in the last few earnings, you see GME have, have these run-ups leading up to earnings. And then after earnings, we see it drop off. So I do think we can get to, you know, very close to that $300 level, maybe that 294. This right here is creating a rounding bottom, right? We can get to probably that, that 290, 294 level uh, before earnings potentially pushing it to, to the 300 range. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's very doable. And you see this right here, this right here in technical terms is called a bullish crossover, right? Or a, a golden cross, whatever you want to call it. But it's when the shorter moving average moves above the, the longer moving average. And in this case, the 21 EMA is crossing now above the 50 EMA. So, you know, it's very plausible, more than likely that we see this rounding bottom here complete right and we see uh gme at least push to that near that 290 level um and this is what you want to see on on uptrends by the way these long accumulation patterns because if we do finish this accumulation pattern then the plausibility of hitting that 300 to 350 range becomes a lot more likely i just want to see more volume push up if you if you see here the volume what it looked like um you know, back at the height of the GME saga with Melvin Capital and, and those spineless hedge funds. Look at the look at the volume here, man. The volume was so much better than it was right now. So we definitely need a lot more volume to keep propelling this price up. Look, at the, I mean, this type of volume is what is what pushed us to you know, $480. And without the volume, don't delude yourselves. The price is not going to see that. We need the volume, right? You need the volume in order to see that. Just like when I was talking about with the uh, the short squeezes, 
just because something has a high short interest, right? If you look here on, uh, on Ortex, just because something has a high short interest does not mean that it is going to see a price hike because it needs a lot of volume in order to, to kickstart that short squeeze, right? Not everything that has a high short interest will see a short squeeze. Like I said before, most things actually won't. So, and that is why hedge funds continue to short because they know that the likelihood of them getting zinged is very low. So anyway, all right. Um, AMC to test 52 week high. Yes. Your views on Doge guys, please stop with the, the lazy questions. Um, give me a, a more contextual question. Tell me, you know, are you talking about short term? Are you talking about Doge in terms of fundamentals? Like, do I think it, it's a good long-term coin? Um, y'all selling AMC, Hannah West. Uh, it depends where you bought. It depends what your investment horizon is. Um, you know, I, I know that a lot of people that are trading AMC and GME and whatever are probably new, uh, new traders that, that are looking to make money. But guys, know what you're getting into, right? Um, it behooves you to eventually learn how to read charts because that's when you, that's when you don't panic. Um, that's when you can make more informed decisions as to what does this price represent in the grand scheme of things. Without this, if you're just, you know, on your phone and you're just l l on Robinhood clicking any random price, it it's, uh, it's basically luck, right? You're either going to hit it or you're not, but there's no informed decision there. And then even worse off, if you buy it, and you see the price drop, then you're going to panic and potentially sell um, without knowing whether that price drop is, is temporary or not. So, you know, asking should I buy or should I sell is a largely irrelevant question. It depends on where you bought, what are, what are your goals, what is your investment horizon, what is your take profit. Um, from there, you would formulate an exit point, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I again, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot of people are new and they're trying to make money, and you know, everyone wants wants to make money, but you know, it does not behoove you to ignore the skill level that is required in order to make money in the long term, right? Otherwise, you're just going to be buying randomly and then hope for the best. And that's not really a way to trade. Um, three white soldiers, LOL. <laughs> um, this hedge war, not about money. Dude, juice, juice is loose. Listen to me, okay? Listen to me. Here, let me, uh, let me focus on, on me here, all right? This is not a war. As I said earlier, don't discount the possibility or like or 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 even the likelihood that hedge funds have longs on these things. Just take a look at the calls, dude. These are institutional orders. Take a look at the damn calls. Look at the open interest. Look at AMC's open interest. Here, I'll refresh this. Don't delude yourself and think that you're engaging in some sort of war, okay? You're not. Now, again, I, I do love the fact that the community is coming together and the community is finding ways to make money, whereas, you know, these games were really reserved at one point to big players or, or to hedge funds, okay? I, I do like that and I appreciate that and I love the sense of community more than anything that that... Uh, trading is is uh, is building, but don't delude yourself and think that this is a war. Because if you look at these short, uh, the uh, the open interest here, this open interest is likely mostly institutional traders. Look at the the number, like this is insane. We have 1.4 million calls open interest. These th these are not just you know regular Joe schmoes. So don't for once you know, think that the hedge funds are also not buying calls on AMC, calls on GME, um, even if they are short these things, 
right? They, they're, they're likely playing both positions. They're likely playing both sides. They could even, uh, what do you call it? They could even um, manipulate short interest data to force people into buying GME and AMC because they know how, you know, Wall, the Wall Street bets crowd is, is going to go. They can even do that and open up more calls than they have shorts, right? They are willing to take that hedge. They are willing to spend the amount of money uh, required to short a certain amount to push that short interest up in order to just pour endless amounts of money into calls. So don't for once think that hedge funds are stupid, okay? Yeah, spineless, yes. Stupid, no. They fucked up once. They're not going to fuck up again. And I guarantee you that the, the total open interest here, this two point, almost 2.2 .2 million in open interest is not regular Joe Schmoes. A lot of this is uh, institutional based, right? So, you know, don't think that you're screwing somebody over by buying MC. Yes, get your money, get your money for sure. Make your money, but don't for once think that that hedge funds aren't also engaged in whatever it is you think that you're smart enough to engage in, right? They have algos. They they have computers that tell them where to put money. They have computer programs that tell them, hey, a lot of people are pumping, um, you know their money into these calls at, at these at, at this expiration, right? They have that data just like I have this data on my computer here. And their their data is even more sophisticated. Their data mining, their ability to massage that data and interpret it is a lot more sophisticated than what you and I have. Right. So just just remember that. That uh yeah, get your money, get your bread. Um but follow the follow the money. Follow the smart money. And right now I guarantee you that a lot of this here is institutional base. It's not it's not just regular Joe Schmoes, okay? So I just wanted to paint the picture for you so, so that you know how the industry works, okay? Um, they're not stupid. They're not going to make the same mistake twice. All right. Can I buy Zillow? So Julie says, can I buy Zillow at current price? Yeah, you could do whatever you like. Why couldn't you buy? <laughs> um but let's take a look. Let's take a look at, at Zillow. Um, I, you know, the the housing market is definitely in in a bubble. Um, ah, this chart looks hella ugly to me. This right here is called a head and shoulders, right? You have the the left shoulder, you have the head, and you have the right shoulder. This is a very bearish pattern. I would not buy Zillow here. I would just wait, wait until Zillow actually reverses closes above something like the 200 day moving average shows you that it wants to reverse because this inverse head and shoulders here is is a very ugly pattern and guess what it is a very reliable pattern always plays out you saw this with palantir you saw this with peloton always plays out or at least recently it's been playing out so no i would stay away from zillow here uh let it prove to you that that, that it wants to reverse um yeah all right Let's see. Thank you guys for the super chats. Uh, big facts about AMC. Nobody talks about that. Everyone thinks institutions are just going to give away their money. Yeah, man. Yeah, they're not stupid. They didn't become billionaires, you know, off the backs of, of, of people by being stupid. They know where you're putting your money in. As a matter of fact, if you have Robinhood or Weeble on your phone, if you have Robinhood or Weeble on your phone, you are engaging in what's called payment for order flow, right? The reason that it's free for you is because hedge funds and institutional uh, players pay Robinhood for that data, right? So just like with Facebook and, and Instagram and, and the social media companies, the reason that they're free is because you are the product, right? So in this case, So in this, sorry, I was I just, I just got a alert on my phone. But in this case, you are the product. So essentially, they're paying Robinhood and Webull for the payment for order flow data so that they can see beforehand where traders are putting their money. So let's just say, for instance, that, you know, let's say that that uh, they, they see that uh, there are a million, there's an order in totality for a million shares of GameStop, Right. What happens at 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 that uh, at that juncture is that the institutional 
institutions will see that before your order goes through. It, it's a split second sort of thing. But they will see that before your order goes through and then they put their order in first. This is how spineless payment for order flow is. By the way, fun fact, that mechanism was actually revolutionized by none other than Bernie Madoff, right? He created the payment for order flow system. Fun fact. Um, and it is legal, right? It's not illegal. What Robin Hood and what Weeble do, it is legal. But that is essentially why it's free is because they are sending all of our orders in to these hedge funds and these institutions so that they can put their orders in first and even get a penny or two better price than you can get, okay? But essentially, they are following where the order flow is going. That's why it's called payment for order flow. So don't for once think that they don't know that we're buying up shares of AMC or GME or TTCF or whatever, and they're not also following the money and putting their orders in, right? They, they have a lot more money to spend than you and can actually drive the price up a lot more than you can by buying, you know, 1.4 million calls as I as I showed you with the uh, the open interest. So um, very good point, 9x9 nine nine Studios. And also thank you for the super chat. Again, you guys don't have to do that, but thank you guys. Um, and I, I don't want to miss any of them. Uh, Khaled says, flour or corn tortillas? <laughs> <laughs> dog come on come on dog we live in la you gotta go corn tortillas gotta go corn tortillas all day every day as a matter of fact if you go to a famous taco truck like leo's or something here in la and you ask for flour tortillas they'll probably take a shit in your tacos bro like you come on you can't go flour you gotta go corn <laughs> And shout out to those that, that have the blue corn, by the way. All right. Uh, thoughts on Palantir? Um, thoughts on thoughts on thoughts. So uh, Palantir, yeah. I mean, like I, like I said in my, in my Palantir video, I think between $20 and $25 currently, based on a conservative discounted cash flow model, between $20 and $25 is the fair price for, for Palantir, right? And this head here as part of the head and shoulders. This was uh, definitely an orchestrated, not an orchestrated pump, but just like, you know, with, with GME and AMC, it was a, uh, you know, basically a group of people uh, putting in a large amount of volume. You see the volume that came in here is, is abnormal and pumped the price up. But, you know, this currently is, is an anomaly. This, this is not natural price action, right? So, um, I do think that between 20 and 25 bucks until we get, you know, more, more data, um, regarding its, its margins, regarding its deals, et cetera. And I, I think that, you know, whether I know that there's, there are different narratives floating around online as to why a lot of insider selling is going on. You know, a lot of, uh, Palantir fans say that it's, it's because they, want to pay their taxes or, or they have a tax bill that they need to pay, whatever. Um, you know, regardless of the reasoning, the matter of fact is that insider selling does not help the stock price, regardless of the reason, whether they, they need to do it or not. So I think you need to, to that, that insider selling to stop um, and likely will, will stop potentially next year. And then also we need to gain some more information on its upcoming deals and then how it's going to handle its profit margins, which, you know, it, it, the profit margin is getting better, but it's still um, deep in, in the negative. Also, on the daily, you have this 50 MA to contend with, right? This 50 moving average to contend with, which we got rejected heavily back in April. We're at it right now. So, and we also got rejected at the end of April too. So this 50 moving average continues to be its Achilles heel in the short term. Um, and you could potentially sell a call spread or, or buy a put spread here uh, for actually, you know, a very low risk trade. Um, but it needs to close above the 50 MA to see any sort of new price rally to that 25 range. But I think 20 to 25 is, is a fair value currently for Palantir. That is my opinion. All right. Um, do you think Doge will hit $1 in the next year or two? Yes, I do. I actually do. Um, however, pay attention to what, what comes out of Elon's mouth, because if, you know, he, he was saying that, you know, should Tesla accept Doge, um, working with Doge, uh, devs, blah, 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 to improve this and that. Um, 
if he comes out with a tweet, unfortunately, the, the, the crypto market is swayed by the tweets of one eccentric billionaire, which shouldn't be the case. But if he comes out and says, if Elon comes out and says, you know, um, forget Doge, we found a way to efficiently mine Bitcoin. Bitcoin is now the way. You're going to see Doge tank, mark my words. So be very careful with the amount of money that you contribute to a Doge investment in the hopes that it hits $1, right? Because it is going to be a very fickle um, proposition, right? It's really going to be based on on whether Elon says, yes, Doge is, is the future. We can actually use this going forward. We found a way uh, to efficiently mine cryptocurrency and, and Doge is the way, or, or they might even move from proof of work to proof of stake. But if he comes out and says, you know, forget Doge, it's now all about Bitcoin, then you're going to see Doge tank. Trust me. So, um, Bernie, these questions are like finding Nemo thoughts on thoughts. <laughs> yep. Uh, Hey Z, how bullish are you on Tesla hitting t Tesla hitting all time high again? Um, not going to happen in the short term in, in my view. Um, I think that there needs to be the narrative, it's it's going to be encircling around the uh, level five autonomy narrative, right? The closer that they get to level five autonomy, the higher the price is going to creep up to the highs that, that we saw before, right? The, the closer it's going to creep up to the highs that we saw before because a lot of the, the price expectation or a lot of the, the price rally was based on the expectation that level five autonomy was a lot closer than we thought. So it definitely needs to start cashing in these checks. Tesla, that is, needs to start cashing in these checks um, on what it promised or else you will likely see the, the price start to drop. 50% of Doge is held by 22 wallets. You know what we call that? Um, that's a good point. And yeah, so the team 624 says 50% of Doge is held by 22 wallets. This is actually a phenomenon called the Gini coefficient, right? The Gini coefficient talks about how well an asset is distributed. And uh, Bitcoin is actually has a terrible Gini coefficient and Doge probably even worse. Um, but yeah. Hi Z, what time frame are you looking at on your chart? Uh, the chart that I'm looking at here, uh, mostly what I'm talking is, is the one day, but when I'm day trading, I mean, come on, son, this chart is the one minute up here. This chart is the five minute, you know, when you're day trading, you want to look at, at short term time frames. I know people that use, I can't remember what the product is called now. Uh, it's really popular among day traders. I can't remember what it's called now, but the, it, it, there's actually a 10 second and a 30 second chart. Um, God, what is that platform called? I can't remember. Anyway, for me and what I do these days, um, excuse me, for me and what I do these days, uh, the one minute and the five minute chart are enough because I'm doing so many things and I'm doing videos and I, I don't, I don't have the time to day trade like I used to. Like, dude, before when, when I didn't have a channel and I, you know, I enjoy talking about this stuff. So I love having a YouTube channel. I would take that over. Um, you know, day trading in the dark for, for eight hours any day, but I used to day trade a lot more. And yeah, I mean, the fact that we do have now, you know, ten, one second and 10 second and 30 second charts is, is amazing. Um, because just as you saw me day trade those AMC calls for, for profit, uh, and if you haven't seen that, rewind the video, but just as you saw me do that live with the one minute chart, imagine what you could do with a, an even shorter time frame. So yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it looks like AMC here on the five minute. And this is why you look at different time frames, as I said earlier, to corroborate things. So the one minute here, um, you know, shows you a more granular view. But if you look at the five minute, AMC is actually respecting these levels really nicely, right? So let me just extend this out. And you have this area that acted as resistance all day. And then we finally broke through resistance and now it's acting as support. So, um, yeah. And, and again, if you want to see how I day trade, I do have a day trading video. Um, but also just rewind it where I, I did execute a day trade earlier today. So, um, let us take a look at what GME is doing too. Wow. GME, oh, man, this is actually the one minute chart. Let's see if we can hold 
Yeah, we saw this double top on the one minute chart. Let's see if we can actually hold the uh, the 100 moving average on the one minute. This is a level that we bounced off of going all the way back an hour and a half now. We bounced off of it at around 7.20 West Coast time, 7.45, uh, 8.37, and we're there now again. Let's see if we bounce off of it or we drop to the 200 MA, potentially the VWAP, which is the purple line right below the 200 MA. Mm -hmm. This actually would be a great place to, to buy a call on GME and, and ride this up. Let me see, actually, if we can execute a trade here. So, wow, these calls are super expensive, man. <laughs> Let's take this 260 call, copy it. Huh. All right, the, the bid ask is, is a little wider than, than I'd like. So let's see, because the, the bid is 1135, the ask is 1185. I wish it wasn't so wide because it makes profitability like when the bid ask spread is so wide, it makes profitability a lot harder. That's why the AMC, uh, at least as it relates to options, AMC is a lot easier to trade than uh, than GME. But I I'll take that and I'll paste it here. And we'll pull up GME's chart here. So again, my top chart and my bottom chart are linked. The top chart is the one minute. The bottom chart is the five minute. These two are linked. So let me zoom in. But yeah, we're bouncing off the, the 100 day like a champ. Uh, let me go in here and look at timer sales. Actually, let's do show all sizes. Why is there no volume on this? Okay, because it's an expensive call, we have to bump down the, the number of time and sales. But let's see, 11.54. What is the, uh, the bid price? Okay, 11.50 to 12. All right, let's see if we can actually. Buy this here at God, I don't want to spend 1173 for it. It was just at 1150 just a few seconds ago. Yeah, there's a white bid ask spread. Um, let me buy. Let's see. 1140, 1140. You know what? Let me put a buy in at 1140 and see if we get filled. If we get filled at 1140, that would be a sweet price. Okay, we got filled at 1140. Cool. Now, what you want to do is calculate a percentage that you'd be happy with, right? So, if you go to 11, we bought it for 11.40 times 10%. Hopefully, we bounce off that 100-day moving average. Uh, 12.54. All right, let's see what we can sell it for, actually. So let's see if we get a bounce here. Whoops. All right, it's holding really well at the 100-day moving average, but... If we start crossing below, I will likely sell this and rebuy it or maybe buy another one, depending, at VWAP or at the 200 moving average. So let's see if we get a bounce here, actually. That's also, by the way, on the five minute, that's where the 21 EMA is, fun fact. So I'm also looking to see if we hold the 21 EMA in the five minute, right? Like you don't want to make hasty decisions. If the 100 day, if, if it's wicking below the 100 day, right? Um, you don't want to make a hasty decision and sell it right away. So I'm also looking at the 21 EMA on the five minute to see what happens. But if we get a nice bounce back up to that 245 range, let's see, what was this? What was this option going for today? 
This is the five minute chart for the option. All right, so the last five minute candle went all the way up to 1265. Okay, that would be an ideal selling price. If we can bounce off here, let's see. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna be monitoring this, and you guys uh, keep me updated in in the chat. If if GME's price starts climbing above 240, like if we get to the 245 range, make sure you alert me so I don't forget about this. But I can actually set a sell for this at let me set it at like 12 12:36. You know, I could do that right now. 12:35, 12:36. And that way, if it wicks up, that way, if it wicks up, I will sell it for profit. So I could just leave this as is because this is a limit order, right? So it's it, if it hits my my limit order, um, then I will I will have sold it for for a good chunk of profit, right? And remember, these calls were expensive. I think there were there were a thousand one hundred and forty each call, so. That'd be some nice profit if we actually get to get to that level, right? So we had one successful day trade uh, on AMC. Let's see if we can get this this day trade on on GME. All right, price is bouncing off of the hundred MA like a champ. Now just need to cross the twenty one EMA and the fifty MA on the one minute, and if we can get to right where this red line is, we'd be happy campers. Uh, time and sales look rather mixed. There's almost, it looks like an equal number of calls as, as there are puts. I mean, not puts, sorry. Equal number of, uh, of green orders as there are red orders, right? All right, we'll monitor this. Let me get back to the, uh, the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Did I miss any super chats? I definitely don't want to miss you guys. Great content as always. I salute. Hey, what's up, Ahmad? Uh, what's the call he's playing? This is the May 28th, 260 call on GME. Hey, Z, love the content. With call options, what things should be considered in regards to extra... Oh, I mean, come on, man. You can't expect me to answer this in... You know, in, in just like one one little chat, there's so much that goes into options. Um, I never exercise call options. Let's just, I'll get that out of the way, right? Um, I always sell them for, for profit. So um, let's just get that get that out of the way. I, I'd, I'd never look to, uh, to exercise. Do you see the 60 to $80 range on NEO by the end of the year? Uh, probably not. Power hour for AMC going to be crazy. AMC just barely getting started. I agree. Power hour is likely going to be great for both. But as I said, the, the volume is picking up for both. Um, but yeah, you know, we need the volume to, we need a lot more volume to see the squeezes, the, the types of, of squeezes that we saw back in, in January. Is it too late to get on AMC? I mean, that that's too basic of a question. Um it, it depends on what do you, what do you mean? Right? Like if you know how to day trade, no. Um, but if you're expecting to buy it and instantly make money, no, you will, you will see a lot of fluctuations. And if you don't know how to read a chart, then you're likely going to overreact to those fluctuations negatively. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, up to you. I, I just, it, it's very hard for me to, it's very hard for me to, advocate buying something if, if you don't know how to how to read a chart and you don't know what price that represents right um i'll, I'll always be a, a technical trader dude um yeah it, it's it's hard for me to answer your question like oh should i buy this like i had a, a family member the other day asking if she should buy dog coin not even dogecoin but it's like what are you expecting you're expecting to buy it and then what and then you just become rich what if the price starts going down? What are you going to do then? You know what I mean? So it's like without any sort of guide in the form of a chart, it's going to be very hard to, to recommend buying anything because I, I don't know what you're like, right? Um, AMC hasn't even started. AMC will hit $50 really soon. You know, it very well could hit $50, but instead of focusing on emotional statements, look at data. 
look at data, right? You, you want to look at, at what does the volume tell you? Because if you don't get volume, it's not hitting $50. Hate to break it to you. So look at the volume data. Pay attention to volume. That volume needs to increase in the same way that we saw an increase in volume back in, uh, back in January, right? Look at this volume here. This volume is just getting started. It looks good. Crossing above the 20 moving average for volume. But nowhere near what we saw back here. Look at these, these volume bars here. Right? Nowhere near what we saw back here. So, um, you know, with that said, with that said, um, pay attention to volume. We need, we need a few more of these tall candles. But yes, it could actually get to $50 if you see volume coming in in a similar pattern to what we saw in the end of January. Otherwise, you're not going to see $50 because the price is not going to move based on nothing, right? Uh, is Matic a good buy after Mark Cuban invests in it? Um, again, it depends. It depends on, on what you mean. Um, do you know how to read a chart? If not, it's going to be hard for me to tell you whether you should buy it or not. Uh, Matic is one of the easiest cryptos to swing trade because it has been and you see, I, I drew this a long time ago saying that, you know, if it breaks out of this pennant here, then you can make a, a buy. But it is it is respecting all kinds of technicals, right? Broke out of the pennant, um, testing the 50 MA, bouncing off the 50 MA like a champ. It is, it's respecting technicals. So you want to pay attention to these technicals. You don't, I'm afraid if I tell you something is a buy, you're just going to buy it randomly and, you know, be disappointed if, if the price drops because that's very likely for new traders. They're, they're, if you're asking, you are likely buying at the high. Let's just put it that way. If you're asking about something that you've never traded, you are likely buying at the high. Just like when people ask about NEO or Tesla or uh, GME or whatever, bingo, you're likely buying at the high. Um, and that's probably why you're asking about it because if you are in the know, then you wouldn't be buying at the high. You would already be paying attention to these technical levels. And it's okay if you're new to trading. Just know that if you're asking, you are likely buying at the high. And if you're buying at the high, it is very likely that right after you buy, the price is going to drop, right? A lot of people wonder, you know, why, why does it feel like at, after I buy something, the price drops? Well, it's because one, you're not paying attention to the technical levels. And two, the reason that you're likely buying it, examine that. It is because what you're buying is likely hyped at the moment. And if it's hyped at the moment, that means you are likely buying at the high, right? So Matic here, you are buying at the high. So yes, you are much better off. Um, ah, shit. I clicked off of it, my bad. But you are much better off um, waiting for, for Matic to retest these technicals. And it respects technicals like hell. And, and buy off of these major moving averages. So that's my that's my answer to you. Um, I you know I struggle to tell someone whether something is a buy or not. All right. Uh, any other questions? Lucid user experience presentation in thirty minutes. Yes, that's true, guys. The Lucid user uh, experience presentation is in thirty minutes, and in my view, will be a sell the news event. So you will want to look at CCIV. And, and see if there is a price hike, which today there is. It's up 3%. By the way, this is actually a bullish pattern. This is a double bottom on, on CCIV. But if there's a price hike, then you can likely buy puts. Um, if CCIV, for instance, gets to, you know, based on that presentation, I don't know if we'll get this high, this high meaning like the 24 range, but certainly the 24 range, certainly here, I'm buying puts without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but if we get to, you know, actually the, the 50 MA would be a good, a good marker. So, you know, right around the $21 and 30 cent level, um, you could potentially buy, buy put depending on what, what happens with that, that presentation. Right. So, all right. And let me go back. Did I miss any super chats? Do technicals really play a factor with AMC? Of course, dude, dude, the technicals are the entire, that's the entire story. That is every trade ever made. It's right in front of your eyes. It, it, this data is not coming from the heavens, as I said. Um, 
Hey Z, what do you think is a good entry point for UMC? <laughs> for UMC, a good entry point is um, going back in time and buying off of support when I said it was at support. Other than that, you're better off dollar cost averaging for the long term. Uh, you definitely missed the optimal swing trade, which was buying off of support. And right now it is coming up on 100 day moving average resistance. You can certainly wait to see if we decline some more uh, if we get rejected here. But UMC is a, you know, a long term buy situation. This is going to be a double digit stock in my view by the end of the year due to the fact that the chip shortage is overblown. And by all accounts, I'm talking about experts, not my opinion, will likely be over sooner rather than later. Right. So. All right. Let's check on. Oh, wow. We fell. We fell below the 100 moving average. Now, or let's see if we can bounce. Can we bounce off the 200 MA? Let's see. But I agree with the user who talked about the, the power hour earlier saying that, uh, that we will likely see a price hike um during power hour all right let us check what the market is doing oh wow nice so the s p is up by a third of a percent which is probably why the hedge is getting killed the russell men the, the the small caps dude for those of you that, that want to trade low caps look at iwm which is the etf that is based off of the the russell right those are all small cap these are all small cap uh, stocks, right? NASDAQ up almost half a percent. So the market is actually, you know, started off slow and is actually rocking right now. Let's take a look at some of our favorite tickers and see what's up. Let's uh, organize this by change percentage. So Zscaler up almost 13%. Bingo, wow, up almost 12%. Workhorse 11. Hylion up eight and a half blink is up seven uh so it looks like all the evs are are definitely up even neo is up which i also have cash secured puts on nice man uh play which is dave and busters i highlighted this as a reopening play uh tesla is up a respectable almost three percent square which is a beast anytime square gets to support we bought a lot of square um da, 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 da. nice man and i bet you boeing is up too boeing is a beast of a reopening play man boeing is up a third of a percent today but yeah octa up a percent our, our play on octa doing rather well today nice all right joe jo lee welcome hey joe lee man welcome uh welcome to being a member of the channel. Is Alta going to tank again after earning? Power hour is the last hour of regular market. Yes. Oh, I guess you were answering somebody. Ford is up 7% today. Man, I keep telling you guys, people were, were sleeping on, on my uh, my Ford pick. I keep telling you, Ford is the most undervalued uh, auto manufacturer at the moment. Um, AMC, just buy one share, 100K guarantee. No. Uh, is Alta going to tank after earnings? Okay, let's let's get to Alta. Do you add slowly to your hedge? No, I don't add to the hedge, man. Uh, it's 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 a very fixed percentage, based on the number of stocks, the number of index-based stocks that 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 I own. Uh, sorry, I just have to respond to this message. Duh, not at the, okay. Um, based on a, a fixed percentage of index based stocks that I own, right? So if I own, um, you know, if I own a, a certain amount of S and P and NASDAQ based stocks, then I'll go one to 5%, but no, I never average down on, on the hedge. It's, it's exactly that it, it's, it's a hedge, right? It's not a main position. I'm not trying to lose money on it, uh, or more money on it. I just want to, like if, if I hold a large number of stocks, I just want to basically try to balance out 
the the delta, right? If those stocks go down and we're expecting some uh, a drop in, in the market, but yeah, or at least some volatility. A general question on setting stop loss on options. Okay, what's the question? I don't know what the question is. Um, what's the app you're using for trading? Think or swim. Alp still doing big this year or more patience on that? Um, I've been off of penny stocks for months, man. Like I said, the only penny stock that I currently own a lot of is, is Sesson. But, uh, but yeah, what's your favorite leap play at the moment if you had to pick one? Um, I mean, you can't just pick one stock, but certainly UMC is one. I definitely have leaps on, on UMC. Um, I think it's a bit late for leaps on Neo or Tesla. You want to catch those on, on a major decline and they were already extremely low. So you had a chance to, to leap on those. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, UMC is, is a good one. Um, I think AMD is another good one. If you get a, a drop in NVIDIA post split, that's another good one. Um, looks like you're past the two hour moving average on the street. <laughs> is it? How long have we been going for? Why the fuck can I see the time? Oh shit, two hours and 37 minutes. That's right. Hey Z, I'm looking at ARK ETF. I was looking at a 109 buy. It's up to 111 now. Thoughts? Um, I think you could have bought it for even cheaper than that, man. Like, um, you know, ARC was bouncing off of the 300 day moving average. It was below a hundred dollars. Um, still not, not a bad buy here, but, uh, but yeah, you could have, you could have bought it for, for cheaper than that, but sure. Not bad. I, I, I still have an issue with what Kathy holds in this portfolio, I don't like the distribution in ARK's portfolio whatsoever. I would much rather hold the the NASDAQ or or the SPY at the moment. Um, you know, they, they obviously change the distribution up all the time, but I don't like the fact that Zoom and Teladoc are in their top six holdings. Those are stay-at-home plays, man. Like, I don't mind those stocks, as I said, but they should not be the majority of your portfolio, right? So, all right. Uh, my Google pay isn't working. What does that mean? I don't, I don't use a Google pay. Uh, I don't use a Google phone, man. Th thoughts on Baidu. No more thoughts, questions, guys. No more thoughts, questions. Um, please ask a more specific question. I'm not, I'm not going to answer the, the thoughts questions, right? I'll, I'll just, uh, focus on the, the more specific questions. I'm in that coin spread. Do you have any suggestions? No, you either hold it or you uh, close it because it is it is overall down, but it did gain some value in the last couple of days because coin is up, right? Um, so you either hold it or sell it and retain whatever values left left on it, right? You could roll it out, but it will likely cost you a lot because I, I looked at, at rolling it out. But yeah, you're going to have to take a, a loss on, on some spreads. And, and that was a, as the alert said, risky, risky, risky earnings play. So hopefully you heeded those warnings and you didn't think that it was a non-risky play. Um, Yo Z, come to Toronto. Dude, I used to go to Toronto quite a bit. I used to roll to Toronto a lot, man. I I used to I used to work out there actually. Um, Regine, two hours. What's up, Regine? Good to see you in the chat. I always see you in the uh, in the comments on the videos. Good to see you in the chat, Ed. What's up, Ed? Two and a half hours. Yep. Uh, um, what happened to High Tide? You used to pump High Tiff. What do you mean I used to pump? Dude, I didn't used to pump shit, bro. I just talk about stocks. I don't, I don't pump anything. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, high tide is sitting here at support. As I said, weed stocks will have their day right now. They're taking a back seat to some of these other narratives, such as the reopening play, but weed stocks will have their day because after the reopening, um, the government will start focusing on other low priority initiatives. 
one of them being marijuana uh, legislation, right? So they will have their day, but High Tide is sitting here as support. Um, I, uh, yeah, but no, I didn't used to pump anything, dude. Like, I just talk about stocks. I don't pump anything. How much were you making relative to your nine to five before you left it to go full time trader? Um, well, it's it is a mixture of trading and investing. I talked about this before, but time in the market beats timing the market, right? So, yes, options trading could be very lucrative, but I also bought heavy on the 2008 2009 crash. Uh, because at that time I had been in the workforce for about seven years and I had a good paying software job, right? Um, and I was single. I had no responsibilities. I lived rather cheap. Like besides driving a fast car, which I just love mechanics. I love cars and motorcycles. I'm actually a pretty low maintenance guy. Like I don't spend money on even the place that, that I live. It's not like extravagant, right? Um, and back then was even even more so. I, I was living in barely a one bedroom. It was like, you can even call it a, a studio. Um, so I was living pretty cheaply and I dumped a lot of money, all the money that I had in the 2008, 2009 crash. So if you look at some of the prices of some of the stocks that I bought, you're actually going to cry. Let's take a look at Apple, right? So take a look at Apple. If, okay. And I want you to take a look at what the price was in 2008, 2009. And please, um, if you're standing up, sit down. Um, you know, if you are not wearing diapers, put one on because you are going to shoot yourself in the foot when you see this or shit yourself or fall down. Okay. In 08, Apple dropped to $2.76. $2.76. So, when you're talking to somebody who was able to buy Apple sub three dollars, um, and they've been in the market for this long, they are at a, an unfair advantage, or I guess fair advantage. I don't know, depending on how you want to look at it. But they are at an advantage. So it's not only trading. Obviously, trading options. I learned how to trade options. Uh, I, I talked about this before, but we had a we had a uh, a group at work at the job that I had at the time and we formed this like options trading group and we all used to trade, we sat next to each other and literally we would trade options all day, like ignore whatever work. We, we were the worst employees, ignore the work we had to do. Um, and we literally trade options during the day, during lunch. Uh, and we taught each other, you know, we, we would back test each other's strategies. We would talk about what we would have done differently. Um, that is probably the most formative trading experience I've I've ever had. And I went to finance school, but they don't teach you this stuff in finance school, right? But you know, that trading group I'm I'm so thankful for because you know, not everyone gets that opportunity, but if you have an opportunity to get together with other traders who have similar investment horizons as you, similar risk tolerances as you, you guys can keep each other accountable and not make stupid mistakes or limit the stupid mistakes you make and check each other, right? It's it's a way of having checks and balances. But that was the most formative experience that I've ever had trading. Um, and so I started trading options in 2010 and it really became lucrative. But alongside my long-term investments, which if you're buying Apple at $3, that's ridiculous. Um, it got to the point where I was making about nine to 10 times more from trading than I was from working, right? And once it got to that point, then work became an opportunity cost. It became something that, you know, if, if you actually spent time working, you were making less money. Um, but I, I'm not going to tell you that one, it, it took, you know, I was able to do it overnight. No, dude, I've been trading for over 15 years. Um, you know, really started 20 years ago, but with real money, I would say about 15 years. So, so yeah, man. Um, uh, error, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming as such of you. Okay. All right. Um, hopefully that, that answers your question, but let me get back to the, 
the super chat because I saw one coming in. Uh, Hazmat Singh, why in the hell are you spamming the chat? Just for that, I'm not going to answer your question. Don't do that to people, man. Don't ruin their experience. All right. Uh, sh sorry if I mispronounce your name. Shashank Reddy. For small accounts, 10K, do you suggest working up to 100 shares? No, dude. No. Okay. So I've seen a certain YouTuber. Um, I've seen a certain YouTuber who talks about needing to own 100 shares. That is absolute BS because each share price is a different value, right? So owning 100 shares of Apple is very different than owning 100 shares of Tesla is very different than owning 100 shares of Amazon. You certainly don't need to own 100 shares. In terms of diversifying, what you should focus on is not spreading yourself out too thin, right? So not having too many stocks and only being in stocks that you have a high conviction on. Yes, eventually would it be nice to have 100 shares? Sure, but owning 100 shares is not a necessity. But yes, if you wanted to sell covered calls, you can't do that without owning 100 shares at the minimum because each contract you sell, you got to own 100 shares per one contract. So, um, so yeah, uh, you certainly don't need to own 100 shares. Focus, if you have a 10K portfolio, focus on building a long-term portfolio full of value and growth stocks that are discounted and that are in the blue chips territory and that you have a high conviction on, right? And don't spread yourself out too thin um, and know why you're buying what, what you're buying, okay? So that, that's what I would say. Uh, Ashraf says, La Croix is French for tap water. <laughs> Fuck, it's better tap water than we have in California, I'll tell you that much. Um, Let's just say you are pumped up to talk about stocks, not pumped to stocks. All right. I appreciate you, Niha or, or Neha. What are you having for lunch? Um, I'm probably either going to grill uh, a filet mignon that I have in the, in the fridge. I'm probably either going to grill that or I'm going to have Chipotle. Uh, what did you used to work on in Toronto? I used to work, uh, I used to do software, uh, but... I, I had a contract with, uh, with Rogers, which is why I used to go to Toronto quite a bit. Um, this is a smart guy. I appreciate you. A crash is a heck of a buying opportunity. Yes. You're actually going to cry. Uh, is there a proper education path for a trader? Uh, no, I mean, I went to finance school. And they don't teach you that. I mean, they teach you how to value companies and stuff, but they don't teach you how to trade. And they certainly don't teach you about, about options, right? Um, oh, wait. Why did somebody say stop streaming, dude? Why did somebody say stop streaming, dude? What happened with a David Blaine look? I don't know. People say I look like David Blaine sometimes. Um, come to Texas, bro. All right. If you uh, if you get me some some uh, some barbecue, I'll definitely come to Texas. What up, traders? Uh, BMW M3. Yes, that is what I currently drive. An M3. All right. I went to UC Irvine. Learned nothing. <laughs> Dude, I went to finance school too and I dropped out of law school and I learned nothing. What's your take on UMC? Already talked about it in this stream. I talked about it in yesterday's video. So go back and watch that. You're going to vote for Meet Kevin for governor of Cali. No, uh, I'm going to vote for Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> if Meet Kevin becomes governor of California, look, I need to be mayor of LA, all right? I need to, I need to, to cash in on the... Uh, on, on some of this, this YouTube camaraderie. If me, Kevin becomes governor of California and I'm not mayor of LA, I'm leaving California. Okay. So if he becomes governor of California, I'm going to lobby to become mayor of LA and it will happen. 2021 M3 with the big grills. Ah, I don't like the big grills, man. I do not like the big grills. Um, I don't mind the black on black M4 because it hides the grill really well, but yeah, man. Um, vote for Z. Hello from Toronto. Run for mayor. If I run for mayor of LA, 
Who who's the mayor of LA right now? It's uh, Garcetti, right? Fuck that guy, bro. I could be mayor of LA. Uh, yes, come to Texas. Yo, from Scotland. What's up, Robert? What's up? Uh, Scotland. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in uh, in Glasgow. Uh, went up to the Highlands. Beautiful country, man. Beautiful country and really, really sweet and funny and sarcastic people. I, I love the humor in Scotland. What do you think about buying property in LA or Cali? Um, if I mean, look, the weather here is better than the weather anywhere else. So, you know, if, if you like it, then then sure. Um, yo, check GME. OK, let's check GME. <sighs> Oh wow, falling below VWAP. All right, let's see if we can uh, if we can catch a bounce here. Oversold on the one minute RSI. Uh, doesn't look so bad on the on the five minute chart. Uh, looks like we're nearing oversold territory in the five minute chart. But I will likely yeah. Let's see. I will likely hold this. Actually, hmm. Looks like we have support at 226. So I either might double up on calls if we get to 226, which I will likely do. Or um, let's see. Yeah, this right here, and I can draw this out, is where the support level is currently. All right, I think I'm going to, uh, damn, we've been running for almost three hours. All right, I think I'm going to end the stream. But this is where support is currently. So I will likely double up on calls if we get to this level. So let's see. And this would also coincide near where the 100 MA is on the five minute chart. So, and uh, yeah. All right, let's see if there's any lingering questions. Z, Mayor, Z, Mayor, Andre, Jick, homeless soon. Meet Kevin Governor, Z, Mayor, Andre, Jick, homeless. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, I don't know if that guy's going broke soon, but yeah. Uh, going back to Cali, strictly for the weather. Yep, strictly for the weather, women. Yep. And the weed, sticky green. <laughs> That's a biggie lyric. Uh, first time on your channel. You seem to know your shit. I'll be back often. Welcome, David. Welcome. Uh, yes, come back often. What platform is this? This platform is Think or Swim. All right. Uh, did I miss? I don't want to sign off if I missed anyone's super chat. I think Shashank was the last one that I got. By the way, your name sounds like uh, one of my favorite movies, Shawshank Redemption. I wonder if uh, if you got that in in school. All right. Uh, what is your favorite car you ever owned? I would have to say the 2018 M3, for sure. I would have to say the the 2018 M3. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm looking at the uh, mid-engine Corvette. Not great handling, but great, you know, off the line. So we'll see. You are a veteran in the market. Z. Oh, $2 for Apple. <laughs> yeah, man. Don't leave us. Uh, no, no, no. I just got on. So, dude, I, guys, I've been streaming for three minutes, for three hours, two hours and 55 minutes. I got to go. Uh, I got to go trade, man. I got to go trade. My favorite movie, Shawshank Redemption. M2 competition. That's a beast as well. I drive a 2000 E320. You know what? I used to have the 2005 E320, believe it or not. It was in this like silverish color. Um, Z versus Graham Stephan for mayor. No, nah, Graham Stephan can't be mayor of LA. That fool moved to, uh, where the fuck? He moved to Nevada or something, right? Um, please stream more often. All right. We'll definitely do. What do you think of the new Dubai coin? I don't know, but I will be in Dubai soon. If you guys are going to be in Dubai, let me know. And we could definitely do a, do a meet up there for sure. I don't know what the Dubai coin is about, honestly. Um, 
All right, all right, all right. All right, guys. Uh, stream more often. Great video. I will definitely stream more often. Um, thanks, brother. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Honestly, thank you guys for, for joining. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you for tuning in. Had a great turnout on the live stream today. Uh, yeah, looks to be about, uh, you know, a consistent 1,200 viewers, 18,500 of you join the stream. So appreciate you guys. Nicole Harris says, visit me in Atlanta. <laughs> I do have a lot of friends in, in, in Atlanta, but, uh, but yeah, all right. Um, thank you guys. Appreciate you. Have a great day. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the rest of the week. Uh, and for those of you that are on the discord, I'll see you guys on the discord. Peace.